Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Sorry we're starting a little bit late. Um, I call this meeting to order at 6.07 p.m., a regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the Isle Vista Community Services District. Today is Tuesday, June 6th, in 970 Embarcadero del Mar. Um, and I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded. Um, I'll now take roll. My name is Ethan Bertrand, and I'm present. Uh, Director Jordan. Director Brandt. Director Freeman. Here. Director Hedges. Present. Director Geis. Director Thurlow. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, Director Jordan and Director Geis both cannot attend tonight. Director Brandt should be here momentarily. Um, now, uh, just a reminder, if anyone has not submitted um, Oath of Office um, or AB 1234 training certification to Secretary Brandt, um, please submit that. I think we can uh, take this off of our weekly reminder at this point. Um, they're still working to figure out how to do the AB 1825 training. Um, and also an announcement, two copies of our key uh, for this room, we've been alerted, have not been returned to the Park District. So if anyone has a key on them for this room, let us know. Um, it's probably attached to a um, paperclip type thing. But uh, just something that I said I would uh, share with the board. We will uh, now move into board member reports. Um, I'll start off. On Tuesday, May 22nd, I spoke at the Santa Barbara City Council meeting uh, during their library discussion. I was attending the meeting, but the reason that I spoke was um, they're currently considering a library, a change to the allocation formula for um, how the per capita fee for unincorporated residents is distributed among the system. And uh, the Goleta Branch Library right now seems to be moving in a direction where it is going to lose um, much of the per capita funding. Now, where I got involved was Isla Vista residents were continually brought up, um, and the claim was from many supporters that any change to the funding formula would be disenfranchising Isla Vista residents of services. Mm. However, during this time, there was never any mention of, um, of actually providing services to Isla Vista residents, but more just making sure that the money's going to the Goleta Branch Library. Um, it's something that I hope we'll discuss at this board in the future, uh, being that I'm sure we have an interest in it. Um, next, I, uh, following the last regular meeting, I contacted uh, the Office of the Chancellor and Executive Vice Chancellor regarding um, having 15% of our pledged contribution of $200,000 for this year going to administrative overhead type things. Um, I received correspondence back and we'll be having a meeting on that tomorrow. Um, on Memorial Day, I was pleased to speak at the Santa Barbara Veterans Day uh, luncheon at the Veterans Memorial Hall with District Attorney Dudley, uh, Council Member Dominguez, and a few other local leaders uh, recognizing the veterans for their sacrifice. Uh, it wasn't something that I was initially planning on speaking at, but was mm -hmm. glad to be out there representing our district at that event. Um, I was happy to attend the St. George Family Youth Center's I'm a Student 2 Town Hall where they discussed many concerns that we've discussed at this board, um, especially those related to public safety, um, and I look forward to hopefully having them come to our board at some point. Um, I'll also say that I've been in contact with the Department of Political Science about the next round of our internship program, and uh, we do have interns who have been selected for the next cohort uh, for that to begin in a few weeks. Um, and we'll have a discussion at the board level on our next agenda about that. Um, and that is all I have. Uh, Can I just ask you one question? If it's not, if we have to wait. Did they indicate to you how many? Um, two. Two for the summer? Yes. Um, that's two new interns with one of ours carrying right. over. Um, but we'll have uh, more discussion on that in the future. Um, and then also, uh, our intern, Kelsey Reed, has prepared a uh, report on the first three months of the district and many of the accomplishments we've had and things that we've done, um, which I will be sending out um, as the board president, uh, most likely tomorrow, if not in the coming days, um, to media outlets and also uh, the Isla Vista Self-Governance okay. Initiative uh, for distribution. Um, it'll be clear that it's coming from the board president, um, but I'm looking forward to sending that out. and. Um, Next, we'll go to Director Freeman. So a uh, meeting or two ago, I was directed to provide information on 
Municipal Advisory Councils. Um, I am on the agenda for the Isla Vista Community Network this week in order to talk to them and solicit more community feedback on Municipal Advisory Councils. Um, and uh, I will be bringing that at some point to the, uh, probably at the next meeting to the board. Um, the next thing is, um, so I've mentioned in previous meetings that I have obtained legal representation um, just to cover myself as far as any liability that might end up happening in relation to things. Uh, I know that um, there is, uh, Gabriel Pragan has submitted numerous things to our district, some of which um, we've talked about, such as letters, there are other things. Um, I would just like everyone to, to know that I have received advice that due to Gabe having worked on my supervisor campaign last year and due to Gabe having um, been employed by SORC IT for customer support for part of last year and currently uh, actually um, occasionally making money from me by doing office cleaning work, um, that due to common law conflict of interest possibilities, any discussion, um, including closed session discussion of issues related to Gabe, um, I should be recusing myself from and I will be recusing myself from. Um, so in case that affects anyone's plans or thought processes, et cetera. Uh, and I think that that's all I have to report today. Thank you. Uh, Director Hedges? Uh, nothing much to report other than last Wednesday I did attend, I believe, a city state of the city uh, gathering, and um, which I found very, uh, uh, I will say, educational and, uh, in a sense, forward thinking about uh, some of the challenges that a, a new political entity like a city might face. And um, so at any rate, I did take some notes during, just from what I was observing there. And, and actually, I just will say, um, y you know, forgive me, I used to say the not ready for prime time city of Kalita, and um, I was really quite impressed by what I saw there. In, uh, uh, you know, not that they're there to prove anything to me, but uh, uh, it, it was impressive the responsibility that they've taken up and the progress they've made. So I commend the city of Florida. Awesome. Uh, Director Therla? I have nothing to report. Nothing to report. Okay. Um, when Director Brandt comes back, we will return to this section to allow him to give a report if he wishes. Um, at this time, we'll go to the consent agenda. Um, so here, if anyone sees anything that they would like to pull for further consideration, uh, speak up. I have two things that I would like um, for us to uh, pull well, for small corrections, one of which is um, the approval of the minutes from April 18th, and one, the approval of the minutes from uh, May 16th. Were there any other uh, corrections that someone saw, Director Freeman, um, or anything you'd like to speak about more? I, I, and if you're, you, you have a copy of all the things, I wasn't certain if everyone even got a copy. I, I yeah, copies, behind your uh, computer? Yeah, you can please hold the minutes now. This, I only got a packet, but I, I've got them myself. I just want to make certain that everyone else got. I've got them on my computer, so. Okay. okay. Um, the, I know, uh, uh, maybe this is one of the things he wanted to pull. I know that uh, uh, guys who's not here is specifically the reason why, or one of the reasons why, we are still queued trying to do the April 18th one. Because um, he had pulled this meetings ago. And since he's not here, maybe we should allow him to provide that input. Maybe we're curious what it was. Okay. I'm just bringing that up. Um, I, I'd be all right with that if, if you think he might have something. Well, the, the, whole, the whole reason why we didn't approve this was because he disagreed with something that was on oh. it before that I did not understand his complete disagreement with, with, with the wording of that motion. And so, um, I mean, I, personally, I, I would just vote for it now but because I, I, w I would have voted for it when it came up the first time. But I'm just telling you that. Oh, and opinion. you know, I actually looked into that. And yeah, I'm comfortable moving forward without. Um, Without him okay, all right. being here, but as I, I said, as I said, I'll just vote to, to approve. Okay. It. Well, I have something specific I want to bring up on okay. there as well. Um, is there anything else that as all anyone would like to pull? Yeah. Um, Two point five F. Okay. Two point. So we're gonna pull the whole two point five. Um, no, you just have to pull two point five. Now. I just want to discuss subsection F. Then we have to pull. We can approve all the rest of it. Okay. Then just F. Um, all right. And uh, with Director Brent here, I'll let you give your uh, director's report real quick before we move Sweet. on with the consent agenda. Sweet. Give me just a moment to get settled. Sorry for being late, everyone. I was um, 
hanging out with some students uh, in the Politics of Isla Vista class. Great educational experience. Um, for people. Worthy cause. Definitely. How'd the person do that played me? Um, oh, you can ask him. He's right there. What's up? George said, how did the person do that played me? Oh, it was great. I was counting <laughs> you, George. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me just pull this up. <laughs> So I'll start off, I think I can remember some of this from my head. So um, the first thing is um, I provided the board with a document and that was the template for doing a director or a committee report. This is something that we've talked a little bit about in the past, um, about having some sort of way to do a report. And I know I previously issued that secretary um, memo about, um, about how I didn't want reports, but I think after we spoke about it a little bit more and the policy committee is um, it's something that they've talked about in the past. Uh, I figured uh, that there's no better time like the present than to just have some sort of a template. It's something that's pretty based off of just the way that the county uh, has their staff reports done um, or the county's committee reports. So um, I think that it's pretty simple. Uh, uh, it's just a template. The thing that I sent everyone around was a Word document so you can edit it and everything. Um, the California Special District Asso uh, Association is having um, seminars. There's a workshop on the CPRA that I'm enrolled in and I'm gonna attend. That's on June 15th in Camarillo. Um, there's also a web compliance web seminar and that's on June 16th at 10 a.m. Uh, so I'm signed up for both of these and look to have uh, some good information being learned there. Um, also, so um, we've taken, previously taken a position on the uh, Sheriff's Department's um, proposed cuts. Uh, they were gonna cut nine FTEs, uh, Sheriff's deputies, um, and we took a position uh, of supporting the reinstatement of those into the final budget uh, or the proposed budget. Now the proposed budget is out and there are 6.5 uh, of those back in. Um, and so uh, we're not agendized to take a further action on that, uh, which is unfortunate, but um, I think it is something that might be well, worthy of, of maybe taking further position on or, or having uh, the president write a letter on. Um, Aside from that, um, I want to speak to uh, our three interns in George because um, I got in contact with Sheila Hess and there are a couple small fixes that you need to make to your financial disclosure statements in terms of it's like all very minor stuff. Um, and so um, I'll be in contact with you all soon. It's basically just checking a box and signing a document um, and I'll help walk you through that as well. Um, and other than that, uh, excited for the rest of the meeting. Cool. Thank you so much. And uh, just to update you on where we're at, so with our consent agenda, we will be pulling 2.2, 2.3, and 2.5F um, to uh, to consider those separately from the, the calendar. Okay. Um, did you um, did you recognize a motion to uh, approve the balance? Have not. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move to approve the balance of the consent agenda, uh, with the exception of the items we have pulled. So with the exception of 2.2, 2.3, and 2.5F. Yep. Cool. And Will, you got that? Thank you. Is there a second on that? I'll wait for a second and have a question. Second. OK. Yeah, second. Um, point of clarification, where in, is it within 2.5 that the um, time limit for board members to propose agenda items is contained, or is that contained in another agenda item? The 120 hour requirement, is that just part of a uh, policy committee report, or is that something we're gonna approve tonight within one of these items? I couldn't find it. No, that's, that's a policy recommendation from the committee, um, and I believe that, that Paul, thanks Father John. Um, I, where is that on our agenda today? Is it just a report, or are we going to take action on that? No, I so actually, I, I, I know I'm. It's 2.5C. Okay, I just, I just, I just now looked at 2.5, and I couldn't find it. So I'd like to pull, uh, if possible, I'd like to pull 2.5C also. Okay. And as a point of order, I'm pretty sure that if we pull any policies from 2.5, since 2.5 is the agenda item, we just have to consider them individually. So. Okay. So, um, can I ask the maker of the motion to amend it to pull 2.5C? 
So, so moved. Is that family with second? I just want to verify that Spencer said that we would pull them individually, and we can do, we can just say balance except for these two? Except for what we can, I don't think, I don't, CNF. I don't actually think we can. Uh, okay. So would you prefer all of 2.5 being? Yes, well, all, can... and then we'll just go through them individually. Okay, so are you amending your motion to pull 2.5 in this am. entirely? I am. Is that friendly with the second? Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um, and Will, if you could just read back the motion as written. Yeah. Take your time. All right, so the motion to approve consent agenda with the exception of pulled items slash, or yeah, I'm sorry, uh, the motion to approve consent agenda with the exception of the pulled items 2.2, 2.3, and 2.5. Okay, any public comment? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, motion passes 5-0, two directors absent. All right, um, so now, if we go uh, just really quick to 2.2, um, my correction with that is uh, we have noted that uh, Director Jordan entered late, but just to put the time, uh, which was 7.05 p.m. Thank you. I was actually doing that, and I was like, I don't have the time. 7.05, that's great. Okay. So do you maybe have a motion? A uh, motion to approve the minutes from May 16, 2017 regular meeting uh, with Ethan's correction of Natalie's time of entering the room at 7.05. Second. Okay. Uh, any board comment? Any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? So ordered, motion passes 5-0. Okay, so now to 2.3, approval of the minutes from April 18th. Um, so in here, we uh, have the uh, action taken to appoint the Public Safety Committee. Um, however, what I didn't see in the motion was um, the decision to appoint myself, uh, Director Brandt, and Director Freeman to the committee. I believe that happened right after the creation. Um, is is that? I'm sorry. I also you, remember that. Which yeah. item is this? Okay, let me uh, hold that up. It's 3.6 on page. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, um, what I remember is that's uh, right. Okay. Director Motion Thurlow to was, uh, approve. wait, wait, wait. Let's see what Jay was saying. What I remember is Director Thurlow was saying, "It seems to me like you already have three people right here who are interested in doing it." Right. And then you said, "Okay, yeah." So yeah. Okay. okay. Um, motion to approve the minutes from the April 18th regular meeting, um, containing the appointments made by President Bertrand. Second. Okay. And if we can just add to the end of that. Uh, Appointments made by President Bertrand to the Public Safety Committee. Is that friendly? That's friendly. Okay. And Will, <coughs> you could just read back once you have it. All right, so it's the motion to approve the April 18th regular meeting with appointments made by President Bertrand to the Public Safety Committee. Okay. Uh, is there any board comment question on that? Any public comment? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, 5-0, 2 absent. Okay, now uh, 2.5, um, adopt policies as recommended by the policy committee. Uh, let's go to C first and then F. Quick, just as really quick. Um, within C, it uh, it's indicates that board members are, will now be required to uh, request items to be placed on the board agenda at least 120 hours before the board meeting, which is five days. Um, where did that number come from and sort of what's the thinking behind it? And so does that seem like an unusually long time, realizing that you have mm -hmm. to yeah. notice 72 hours ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But it seems like for a board member, to put something on the agenda, it seems like as long as they reach the 72 hour threshold, in other words, why, I understand that there's a burden yeah. on you yeah. to have seven board members all slamming you with 16 agenda yeah. items. So let me ask you, answer your first question, okay. which is, is this abnormal? Um, and from what I remember us looking at in the committee is, no, this is a pretty standard uh, amount of lead time. 
in order to make sure that the agenda can be put together, moved around, and sent out in time. Um, and I have in the past honored requests that have been pretty close to the 72 hour deadline. Mm -hmm. um, but at a certain point, um, it becomes uh, definitely a hassle. Um, and I think that one of the things we've been good at is having the agenda items been like discussed during future agenda items so that everyone mm -hmm. kind of knows what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that that's one of the reasons that uh, the 120 hours seems fair to me. And I'll also say we can't take it at 72 hours because at that time the right. agenda always already right. needs to be on the door here and sent out. Uh, Director Freeman. Uh, yeah, and also, um, I mean, IVRPD had a lead time I think of 10 days uh, that mm -hmm. information had to get brought before staff or to get on the agenda. And this also is not necessarily new because this is the same amount of time that Spencer put a month ago in the. Um, or like mm -hmm. request for guidelines on how yeah. people should interface with you related to the agenda. That's right. But like I said, I had honored requests that yeah, were sent after that. So. Including mine. <laughs> so, so, but now it's a matter of policy, which essentially means that you have the power to reject a director's request to put something on the agenda if it's It means It means I don't have the power to put that on the agenda. Is that something that you would like? Well, let's revisit it. I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm happy to make a motion that we go ahead and approve this, but I think it's one of those things that we should revisit and see if it if it works fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, you know, given the nature of what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff we're doing is sort of coming together quickly. And, That's right. And there's a needs to be a certain nimbleness about this board and how we take actions. Um, so I, I only make that point. On the other hand, I understand that it puts a tremendous burden on you personally to have seven board members slamming you with three agenda items each, you know, 76 hours before the meeting. So I'll make a motion that we go ahead and approve item 2.5 C. And I'll, I'll second that. Okay, so the motion is to approve item 2.5 C, Director Freeman. So for what it's worth, I was kind of under the impression from this that um, what the way that George worded it, which was that um, you would you would have the ability to reject those items, but I, my read of this policy is that you could still you could, if nothing else, personally um, uh, in consultation with the board president, put something on the agenda 73 hours in advance. That it's not that the the only requirement on this is that members of the public, in order for it to be on there, they oh. must have arrived 120 hours in advance. But then you still have the discretion to put items on our agenda hours in advance of the noticing hour requirement. Well, look at look at point one of the 120 it's hours. The, the, the right. that, that says, that, twice, that says yeah. that um, um, like any director may contact the secretary and request an item placed in the agenda no later than 120 hours. I guess that means that I'm not allowed to tell you about it, but you, we, we could still end up with an agenda item that Spencer or Ethan decided to put on the agenda somehow. Mm -hmm. Now I'm actually starting to feel weird and worried that for some reason. Well, you know, let's let's revisit yeah, it at policy that committee. That I think we're all on the same yeah. page. Let's yeah. approve let's and go down go back. the road and see if it works. It Sounds works. great. Yeah. 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 Cool. And um, if we could just clarify at the end of that, after 2.5c, have it amending the policy entitled Board of Directors Meeting Agenda to read as stated, and that's exactly the language listed there. If that's friendly, that's friendly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more board comment? Public comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 5 0. Um, now down to 2.5 F, Director Hurlow. Yeah, I just want to make sure I do not consistently, and, and I apologize because I should be reading these, but I just want to make sure again that um, the drafters of 2.5 F and our internal conflict of interest policy have essentially um, crafted a conflict of interest policy which is in conformity with the Fair Political Practices Commission's conflict of interest policy. Mm -hmm. And that we don't have a conflict of interest policy that's broader than that and therefore could create confusion for directors in terms of, well, I thought I was complying with the FPPC, but in fact now I realize that there was a sentence added here. So as long as you assure me and, and we put it on the record that that our conflict of interest policy essentially is identical to, or maybe that's too yeah. strong a word. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll say what I said at the last meeting is that the reason that the FPPC requires uh, local governments to do this is so that 
they have to go through the process of formulating a policy and have that rewritten so there's no deniability of saying, right. oh, well, we didn't know about this. Mm -hmm. right. um, this is modeled in large part off of what uh, Goleta Water District has in their policy. Um, and the committee did spend a pretty fair time um, looking at this. And um, I think that it would be accurate to say that this is in line and does not require um, the uh, directors or in this case, we also have the general manager listed or consultants to go above and beyond what would be required the by FDPC law. FDPC requirement. That's okay. correct. Okay. And one thing I'll add there is, um, and I'll go right to you, Jay. Um, you'll notice in under the designated positions, uh, we took out many of the unfilled positions. The only one that we left in is general manager, as that's something that required by law where we need to um, have. So we uh, we left that one in, even yeah. though it's unfilled at the moment. Director Friedman. Yeah, I, I, I believe that the vast majority of this is, is essentially things that are required. I do think there are some things that we could pair out of it. And as I've said, we've this out before, that my I do often feel like I would prefer to just refer to things. But I also understand that like Director um, uh, Jordan specifically requested that we provide more detail in the policy manual. And I can, I can appreciate that and go along with these. Um, the next thing, however, is I will state that um, my lawyer decided to ask me for a copy of this in order to um, actually, because he was curious about the same things that George is bringing up, is, well, did you end up drafting anything extra that you're now going to have to be paying attention to? And so, and I actually haven't gotten a copy of it yet, but uh, I was supposed to do that a couple days ago and I forgot. Uh, and so um, I will actually be having him try to determine if there's anything weirdly extra we put in. I don't think that there is. We don't think that there is. But in case that there is, uh, I will bring that back to policy. That'd be great. Like, hey, by the That'd way, my lawyer says that there's. Yeah. It just, it just well, makes it more difficult to comply, and compliance is what we want. No, I agree. I was just going to say, yeah, no, I, that, I think it's good that that's something that we're going to continue to look at. We can't take legal advice off of your lawyer, though. Right. So I'm saying that um, what will happen is, is that if there's something extra, he will explain it to me, and then I will bring it back to policy committee in order to point right. out that, hey, we went above and beyond. So not, ad, not advice. Yeah. Yeah. It will okay. not be advice right. to my lawyer, okay. to you, or to our board. Just throw it out there. Awesome. So I move approval of um, consent agenda item 2.5F. OK. I'll second. Cool. And now one thing that I do just want to make sure everyone understands, upon the approval of this, this gets sent to the Board of Supervisors to then approve it. The County Board of Supervisors is the approval body for this. Okay. Um, so if we are anticipating that we're going to make a change, it may not make sense for us to vote to send it to the Board of Supervisors now. Well, we can, we can improve the policy and then go and like look it over again in policy committee because I'm the person as the secretary who would send it over to the um, clerk or quarters office first and then over to the clerk at the board at the board of supervisors to have it be put on their agenda so um, I can do I think that I can do that at my discretion if okay. that's what you're asking okay that 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 solves uh, my concern awesome. um, any public comment All right, no more board comment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered motion passes 5-0, um, two absent. Um, is that, are those the only policies that we wanted to pull? Yeah. yeah okay. We, uh, um, we adopted the, we the balance. We adopted all the rest. That's not yeah. the impression that I was under. We pulled 2.5 as a whole. I'll move the approval oh, of that, that's right, um, that's right. the balance of the policies as stated in 2.5. Second. For uh, the purpose of easy uh, looking over the record, can we can we change that to 2.5 A, B, D, and E? Friendly. Okay. So we'll just uh, read that back when you have it. Stated in 2.5 A, B, D, and E. Okay. Uh, any board comment? <coughs> any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, the motion passes 5 0 uh, to absent. All right, at this time we'll enter uh, public comment.
Um, at this time, any member of the public may speak on matters within the subject jurisdiction of the Board of Directors that are not on the agenda. The Board will not take action on any item not on the agenda except as provided by law. Uh, do we have anyone wishing to speak today in public comment? Boss Sheba. Um, we all would. Should we stand at the time? Or if you're comfortable. <laughs> Just because um, we are recording it. So uh, yeah. if you're comfortable, it helps. Um, so, hi everyone, if you don't know me, my name is Batsheva Stoll. I was just sworn in as external vice president for local affairs, so I represent UCSD students to boards like the CSD and other organizations in uh, Santa Barbara County. I just wanted to introduce a couple of people on my staff that will be working primarily with the CSD, so you'll probably get familiar with them, they'll be at meetings. Um, I'll let them introduce you. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Austin Fani. I'm a second year at UCSB political science major. Um, I will be serving as Batsheva's deputy chief of staff next year. And I'm super excited for like what she has to offer next year and I'm really excited to just meet every one of you guys, get to know you guys better next year. Hi everyone, my name is Ali Adam. I'm the CSD coordinator in Batsheva's office. I'm going to be a second year, I'm a poli-sci major. And yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting you all and for, to collaborate with the CSD and do some really good things for UCSD and Iowa Vista. So excited for the upcoming year. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Greenberg. Um, I am a third year mechanical engineering major serving in Washington's office as the Commissioner on Public Safety. Uh, yeah, I'm working with uh, primarily with the uh, Public Safety Commission and uh, Police Enforcement. And yeah, very excited to work with you all. Awesome, and so Ali and Austin will be here over the summer, and so will I, so we'll start working on projects and hopefully collaborating with all of you. Thank cool. you. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you so much. Um, any other public comment? None? All right, well, with that, we'll move into section four, discussion and action items. Um, first up, we want to recognize uh, political science interns for their service. Um, and to thank the first cohort of interns um, for everything they've done. And I'll say that one of the members of this first cohort uh, will be recognized at a later date, uh, Stephen, being that you're uh, continuing on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Did that get announced recently? Or at the beginning of the meeting? No. We've known it. <laughs> oh. But. Um, OK. Yeah. Awesome. But, um, but we do have two people who we're recognizing today. Um, Kelsey Reed and Will Grasswich. Uh, I guess I'll speak first about uh, everything Kelsey's done, and Spencer, if you want to speak about what Will's done. And also, we'll know there's still some time left in this, but this is the last um, regular board meeting uh, before uh, the end of their service. And um, to remind everyone, back in um, the beginning of the quarter, there were almost 50 students who applied for this internship program with only three spots open. Um, so we really got the, the best and the brightest. And um, Kelsey's been a tremendous help to um, the district, especially um, with helping me with communications. Um, she was uh, the drafter of our letter to uh, the state legislature um, supporting Assembly Bill 722. Um, Kelsey helped create the PowerPoint presentation that we had at our public safety town hall. Um, Kelsey has prepared this 90-day uh, report that I just uh, spoke about at the beginning. Um, she has helped with our policy committee um, and just been a really good, uh, really good service. Uh, so we so appreciate your service and wish you the best with uh, everything you have going forward and look forward to the last two weeks working with you. Yeah. Awesome. So um, Will has done an excellent job uh, as my intern and I've been really ex uh, happy to work with him. Um, aside from uh, seeing him here every week diligently taking uh, minutes and reading back every single motion. Um, he uh, has been working with me uh, with a number of things, uh, a lot of it related to uh, the work that comes out of formation committee. Um, we've worked together on um, a, a project that broke down some of our statutory obligations as the district, so that's a lot of sifting through uh, really dense uh, local government code uh, and trying to pick the pieces out that are relevant to us um, and figure out what it is that uh, we need to be taken care of. Um, and one of the big things um, that you'll actually get all get to see tonight is uh, some of the work that has been done um, out of the uh, formation committee on the general manager. So 
Um, if there's one thing that's been really great about working with Will, it's that um, he doesn't require the most instruction in the world and I don't have to micromanage you, which is all that I ask out of anyone really. Um, and you've done a really excellent job um, and it's been fun uh, to serve with you over the course of this quarter. So thanks so much. And uh, I don't know, I don't, how do we want to present these? Or um, We can maybe do a picture. Awesome, that? yeah, no, that's a great idea. Cool, cool. And did any other board members have anything to, to add? Just thank you. Yeah, you, got, you jumped Thank in you. and yeah. you helped us. Um, no, really my phone's messed it. up. Thank you. Oh, okay. We can use... Perhaps Susan can help us with the picture. She's ready. So, uh, no more board discussion. Any? Uh, just, I just want to thank Susan for all the help you have done in making sure that these three were successful. Yes. Thank you. And still are successful because we have a little more time. Oh, that's right. So thank you so much, Susan. Um, any uh, public comment? All right. Uh, we will move on. Um, so now, review, approve, and expand communications of the district website. Receive a presentation from the Isla Vista Community Development Corporation on the website, islavistacsd.org, and consider expanding the district's communications with the public through the site. And uh, we have attachment B um, outlining uh, that, that proposal. Now, uh, Director Brandt, did you want to start on this? Uh, yeah, sure. So I actually, I can pull up the website. Uh, I was hoping if we could get a um, quick uh, presentation from Jonathan with Self-Governance Initiative to kind of walk through some of the things. So I'll just start by saying the main reason that I brought this to the board um, is the fact that um, so we, we spoke about uh, the website, I think, back in... Um, back in, in March. Um, and we never really followed up with it, I think. Um, it's not even turned on. That you don't have, that's a good point. I, mean, I don't think that's the issue now. This is supposed to turn. But they like the issue. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Can we connect it to my computer? I have that. Do you want to try that? Yeah, do you want to, you want to plug in? <laughs> so I, I'll continue to speak just for a moment to preface this. So, as as we as a board, um, as we as a board continue to start to do some bigger things that are going to require us to um, file or float proposals um, or request for proposals and start asking um, people to come and and, and propose. Um, what they could do for us in terms of services. I think it's going to be really important that we have a good online presence. Um, one of the things that came out of the last motion on this um, back when it came before us in, in March was um, the process of attaining a uh, domain name uh, and that's something that I'm continuing to work on. Um, been in contact with the California Department of Technology and they have our domain name available. I uh, just got to get the correct paperwork filed. Um, so it's something that I continue to work on. Um, and the site from Self-Governance Initiative, I think it looks great. Um, and really just the reason, like I said, that I brought this is because I want us to be able to use it more um, and to be able to ask Self-Governance Initiative with us to, um, to continue to maintain it um, since we kind of talked about it and then never really followed up. So if we can get this site pulled up. I remember the power button just being you just kind of touch right there. Is it not turning on? It's not turning on. Usually it's the like corner, like right under wait, the corner. Yeah, wait. <coughs> wait. I actually 
question. It's only my television that I've had for eight years. It's not like I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard something. Okay. There we there go. We go. There you. we go. I accidentally turned Thank it you. on once. In a row. <laughs> okay. Our amazing internship program. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> how many how many directors does it take to turn on television? <laughs> okay. And so the next thing that was over on this side, oh, no, and he's, actually, he's got oh, he's okay. So the next thing uh, for for you, Jonathan, go to display settings and change your resolution to 1080p. Yeah, displays, and then hold Option, click scaled. I'm I'm blind. Click scale. Oh, click scale. It's weird. You're both not using the new version of. <coughs> okay, well we can scale there, and that'll probably be 1080p. Okay, that one's 1080p. Okay, that one's 1080p. Cancel. No. Are you not? Are Spencer and I both wrong? That is attached Which are max. to here, which is powered and is attached. It takes five directors, but the yeah. television really has to want to power up. Yeah. <laughs> this, this actually worked really, really generally we well did last, last time. time. Yeah, yeah. 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 The only thing yeah. Was, yeah. And it's yeah. this level of, of difference that, I mean, the one thing I'm going to do then is I'm just going to just to make this work quickly. This might work. This doesn't work to match your computer. Because that's my, this is like, I've got a bunch of random stuff plugged between you and the television, but I bypassed all of it. You want to just unplug it and plug it back in? For old time's sake. For old times. It's classic. classic. It works for me all the time. Yeah, yeah. same here. I like it. You can see this. You have DisplayPort, though, so why are we? Why are we using HDMI? Should we not? Yeah. Well, maybe, we should, maybe your computer is not working. One of these adapters are somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Did you get it to turn on? I, no, it's, it stopped saying no signal Plug for this a second. Plug in between there. Okay. I've got one of those. I'm going to. Mm-hmm. I just used one of those. So do almost the same thing at Pesky Journal Nope. Oh, yeah. Now, it's Are you on the correct uh, channel on the TV? I'm just really curious about this back where you're using. Why is everyone know you've got 12 point? It's only for the built-in display. It's not even detecting. You've got two of these. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if, if we're having issues, we can. OK, well, so now the next thing I'm just curious about is that I we actually succeeded in plugging this into your computer. I just want to plug it into your But see. if this doesn't work right away, we're going to do it without the yeah, presentation. I without. Are you just trying to bring up the website? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, in the next, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm able to do it. It would be good to get a, a computer working One because we have a, another presentation that will be coming up right. later. So. Okay, Jay unplugged it. And oh, we got something. I think yeah. you just got to drag it. You just got to drag it over. You got it, Jay? Yeah, it works for that's Ethan. Ethan. That's Ethan. Ethan. works. I'm okay. nice max on all no. this work. Since Jonathan no, 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 and Spencer no. have essentially the same Excess computer, time. I'm going to work with Jonathan at some point and Excess figure out why the hell we'll figure that out. Or just, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Minimize? Yes. Sure. And now just open up a new window and then drag the window over to the direction where it said the display was. What would you wait, wait, no, this is back this is in the, the age of blackboards. <laughs> now drag, Draw the, website drag the right there. tab. <laughs> I actually yeah. once drew We're gonna give it to Jay and PowerPoint slides yeah. no, I, I know on overheads. Yeah. Like I drew them oh, as, yeah. like, to look like a PowerPoint slide. Yeah. Great. There I, it is. Okay. Uh, no. This is Isla versus CSD.com. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, my T key is broken, so I have to <laughs> copy and paste the T. <laughs> oh, no, no. oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm missing all the shift keys on my computer. This one's broken. That one's <laughs> That's a new computer, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you've got That's broken, too. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. It's that, it's that time in the quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's actually dot com. Is it dot oh, com? This, this yeah. is a domain name that I need to give to Jonathan. Yeah, okay. yeah. we have we've been okay. bagging on that. So here it is. Uh, please begin. 
There it is. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there now that we have a website up, uh, the website's been working pretty smoothly since uh, I last came and discussed it. Uh, it's very easy. Oh, I'm using Ethan's. Um, it's very easy to add new events, um, and I, I include them in all the emails that I also send. So you go to Agendas and Minutes, and we'll just go to the, uh, no, to the May 16th meeting. And as you can see, it has the agenda, and I think you guys just approved the minutes for that today, so we'll put the minutes on, right. uh, on it when it, we get them. But then it has the video for it, and then below it has just like a quick summary of what's on the agenda. And then that's how it is for every uh, board meeting and, <coughs> and and committee meeting. So I, don't, I guess yep. my, it's not clicking. Oh, I'm used to my Mac. Uh, one thing, and I don't want to shame anyone, but no directors have sent me pictures, except Father John sent me a bio, which I have to add on. But everyone needs to send me a, a picture they'd like me to use, because these three especially are not. <laughs> Probably the pictures we want, yeah. and Jay's is cut off. It see, he wouldn't let me. I need like a, I need a special picture. <laughs> I need one that fits the, the dimensions. Yeah, can I can, I can probably teach you how to do it. Yeah. yeah, I'll teach you how to do okay. it. Okay. Yeah. And but you know, we have your emails up at least, so people can contact you, and it has your CSD emails up there. Uh, we have a calendar. That's all working. So if we want to look at, oh, <coughs> I'm really bad at clicking. This laptop's keep uh, touchpad. So, so this is June, so we have the meetings that are later in the month already in there, so people know there will be a formation committee meeting next week and the week after, or two weeks later, there will be the board meeting, the next board meeting. Um, if you look at May, May was really busy because there were a lot of special meetings in May, but you, know, you can see you know, people can browse where the, when the meetings happen. Financial reports is just something every district has, I just put coming soon there, and then district policies I we could post the draft policy manual on there uh, whenever you'd like. And then about this website is the disclaimer on this is not run by the CSD, this is run privately. And then I read Spencer's uh, memo in terms of what we want to do differently on here. And that's something, I mean, all these things can be easily added under board of directors probably. We probably don't need a new tab. Right now we're only running off one category. I'm sure like as the CSD develops, there'll be like one for services or something or, you know, we'll, we'll add more. But right now we just have news and I saw Spencer put in the memo that the president will put like a summary of what's going on on right. news. And that that would be a great use of it. And we can, e we can also put articles from the nexus and the bottom line on here so people can just yeah. read about us. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And then the subscribe yeah. button, if you click that, it is so you can get on the email list serve. So you just fill it out with your name and your email. And I get only like five people have subscribed from here. But uh, this is the link if anyone wants to get on the email list, this is the link they would go to. And it's off subscribe. But besides that, you know, really simple website still. And we can keep adding more. Squarespace is great, like we said last time. It's compliant with all the government you know website compliances even though it's not being done by a government we're still in that uh, we're still wanting to comply and it says here you know it's by the CDC and the CDC has voted and everything and authorized uh, the use of this website through ourselves so everything's all good there yeah any questions about the website or any additions suggestions from the public I guess and from the board in terms of how we can make it better I like the idea of, of posting um, articles <laughs> about stuff that we've been doing, um, or even in, in my role of maintaining other websites, sometimes I write up quick little synopses and pull quotes uh, that are favorable for, um, uh, for, for other uh, things that I actually maintain websites for. So um, yeah, again, just to <coughs> forward, the, the big thing that I think um, will be helpful is I, I want us to expand our usage with this, especially anticipation, in anticipation of us floating proposals mm -hmm. um, so that um, there will be a place where uh, people who want to view the proposal or the request for proposals and um, want to be able to get more information um, and want to just look at our online presence and see it. So, We're um, legitimate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So within that, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, go for it, Tiana.
Thank you. Um, I know that we've talked a lot in the past uh, as far as the formation of the CSD, uh, the philosopher depending on bilingual website. And I don't know if you've had a chance to, to consider that. Yeah, so this, we just got this one done and it's pretty simple. So uh, if we had someone to translate, we couldn't pay them. But if, <laughs> if we could do that, we can, uh, we can make this bilingual. Cause That'd be really awesome. This is, it's so simple. If we just have to change a couple words, there's not a lot of heavy content to make bilingual yet. So we can do it relatively easily. The, another thing would be like the agendas. Those aren't bilingual yet, but that's, that's a gray area in terms of whose responsibility is that, whether it's ours as the website ma like maintainers to post that in Spanish or for the CSD to do it officially, but that's probably difficult. So we can figure out the agendas probably a little separately than everything else, but the basic information can 100% be bilingual. Well, I'm happy to support the part of getting it translated. Yeah. Cool. Then we'll we'll link up. I know yeah. I know where to find you. <laughs> That's, right. That's great. I think that that would be a great idea. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna look. I think Squarespace might even have functions to like make a mirror website. Like okay. so you can. It'll be exactly the same. Like we don't have to make anything new. It'll just be the same page but in Spanish. Great. I think the one discussion before was just considering your evergreen content versus your changing the hand content, <coughs> making sure that the evergreen was simple enough to translate and then making decisions about whether the entirety of your dynamic content, content gets translated or not. I know we talked even about the agendas being bilingual, but maybe the attachments not being bilingual yeah. that were included. Like at least so the topics of the agenda, we mm -hmm. can say these are, this is what's being discussed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are all things that in the future, once we have resources, um, I think that um, one of the things we're going to have to do by the year, I think it's 2019, is have a, a dynamic uh, agenda software and minutes software the same way that the county and a lot of cities do right now, where you'll be able to go on and click on each thing and you don't have to just pull up a PDF. And then that makes it even easier to have that like simple translation being done for the agenda items. So that's definitely something that uh, once we can afford a software like that, like all for it. Um, and yeah, if self-governance initiatives is interested in working on um, the, the, the idea of, of having a, a bilingual website, I think that would be great. Well, obviously we can't direct you to do anything, but I would be a strong supporter of that. We'll do it. I mean, Squarespace has like a literal function to make a website bilingual. So awesome. it would be extremely easy. With That's Diana great. And Squarespace, get it done very fast. That's great. Okay. Um, is there any other public comment? Seeing none, uh, any board comment? Director Freeman. Um, it was, uh, so I had, I, I had heard that the Isla Vista Community Development Corporation um, had, uh, was not, and this, this is possibly old information, but was not making a website for us for us to use, even though that was how it kind of was presented to us a while ago, that instead at your meetings it was actually only that the Isla Vista Community Development Corporation was willing to make a website about us that exists. Uh, has that changed? Did I just misunderstand that? Can you remind me? Yeah, I mean, it's about the CSD, but <coughs> that's a flexible term. Like, I think we can post information, of, you know, it's a, it, we can have as much as we want on here. But we can adopt it as our website. It's not just that it's a website that the IVCDC has that oh. is about us. I think that the, I, my understanding of what we're doing today is we are, wait, maybe, maybe I didn't, didn't misunderstand this. Consider expanding the six public location in the public. Are we, are we what, what we're doing is we're asking, the first thing is asking the board president to more regularly maintain contact with the um, IVCDC in order oh, to okay. put uh, regular reports or regular uh, news things, news items on there. Um, and also asking the CDC, because we can't direct them because this is okay. an independent right. website. We're asking them to publicize relevant uh, documents that pertain to requests for proposals, budget information, um, things that the public would like to know about. Okay, cool. So it is still so essentially it is still their forward. website maintained by them about That's us. correct. And we're not, we're not expanding not. coordination with them to make certain that good information goes there. Yeah. Got it. All right. But That's now true. Director Brandt, if you could speak to point B of your recommendation. Just um, what are we doing by approving the website? I guess maybe approve wasn't the word that I should have used, but I generally mean that the board signs off and says this website is what 
um, this is something that accurately like reflects our mm. presence as a district um, because again like I as we talked about this isn't our website it's being made on our behalf because we don't have the resources for that I, th I think that there's a director I, 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 I guess I'm concerned about where that line gets drawn as far as like let's say the IVCDC puts something weird on the website in the middle of the night which they can totally do and which they even think is reasonable to put there but then it's like are we approved it as an official website mm -hmm. somehow or something like I'm trying to understand what this means I'm totally okay with the IVCDC making a website about us and I'm totally okay with uh, um, I was coordinating well, with them. I'm a little yeah, concerned with uh, maybe the branding of it if it comes off as too official. But okay, Director Thurl. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you raise an excellent point in terms of it's it's gray, and that's why it's almost it's almost probably better. I mean, we don't have the resources to create our own website that we're going to control and own to a certain extent in terms of the content. So, I think this one we should be very very careful in terms of our endorsement of right. it for that mm -hmm. very reason. But on the other hand, express our appreciation that this community group is partnering <coughs> with us. Um, so, and so maybe the best thing is not mm -hmm. even to take action, is to simply, as a group, thank the producers of this and, and say, and that way we don't in some way officially endorse it as our. <coughs> right, and I, I agree on a lot of what you're saying, and I think, um, if we take out section B of that recommendation, we'll be doing that because that way it still directs me to have communication with this organization, which I'm very comfortable with. Um, yeah, I agree, and I'll, I'm also comfortable with with stating that I think the um, the recommendation B, the word approve, may have not been the right word to use, but in that recommendation was not meant to imply that this was somehow our website. Mm -hmm. um, and it was more just a statement of affirmation. Maybe affirm would have been a better word. But in any event, um, I'm, I'm happy to move uh, the recommendations as stated in the director <coughs> report A, C, and D. Second. So moved and seconded. Um, and could we just add to there as found in attachment B to the end of it? Friendly. So we have a few reports. Cool. Well, you got that. And that was director's report, you said? Uh, yes. Cool. Awesome. All right. Any public comment? Any more board comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, 5-0, motion passes, two members absent. All right, now we're going to go on to item 4.3, um, consider insurance risk management proposal. Director Geis consulted with Golden State Risk Management Authority, which led to the creation of the attached proposal for the Community Services District. Tonight we will discuss the contents of the proposal, as well as the general topic of obtaining insurance and risk management services, and determine next steps. Um, one thing is uh, Director Geis uh, sent me this proposal, um, and he said that he, in the future, is going to submit a board letter, so he doesn't anticipate or want for us to take action tonight. Um, but he did want this to be brought to us as soon as possible um, so that we can start considering it. Um, and I actually want to bring it up on here if I can. So, one moment. Can I ask a point of clarification? Yes. By a, what is, specifically, what is Director Geis want to do next a board letter? Oh, he's going to submit a board letter explaining a recommendation, but more importantly, he'll be here to discuss his recommendations for how, for how we should move forward. Um, anyway, I'm sorry, I can't pull it up here, but we do have um, it as an attachment uh, to this packet. So um, this was from the Golden State Risk Management Authority. Um, and after their consultation with Director Geis, um, they came back to us with a quote of $3,200 for general liability insurance. 
um, to be re-underwrited as the CSD expands its offering. Um, they are asking for, if we were to move forward, a three-year membership commitment, and the purpose of that will be to uh, stabilize the rate at which we're paying since it's a shared pool. Um, they are accredited with excellence from the California Association of Joint Powers Authorities. Um, and what they're saying is that this coverage uh, discussed here is a no gaps coverage, um, which includes um, everything from public officials' errors and omissions <coughs> to uh, contractual liability, um, bodily in injury and property damage, um, and some other things. And it's first dollar coverage, um, so with that, the coverage is immediate without deductible. Um, so this was something for us to just have in our minds um, something that we're exploring. Director Fairlow, you yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we um, direct Director Geis to move forward with um, uh, obtaining this particular insurance. I mean, it's my understanding this is the only game in town. Uh, this it's not. Is the, it's not. No. Well, well. Do you I want me to respond to that first, or do you want to finish? Sure. Okay. So, um, the risk management association that's associated with uh, the California Special Districts Association mm -hmm. is um, the SDRMA, Special District Risk Management Authority. And one feature of that um, entity is um, for members who are covered by them, uh, they receive all of their CSDA training for free. Um, that was something that I think we want to yeah. explore. However, this seems like an excellent <coughs> option as well. Um, yeah. but before I go to the director, Brant, did you want to? No, I just want to make, I, I think we need to move ahead with this. I think that $3,000 is the number that we've talked about <coughs> for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, this is, this, you would not drive your car out there without insurance, and we should not be sitting here right now without insurance. And every day that we go without insurance is a day that we're driving our car around without insurance and, and so I, I, I just want to keep this moving I, and I think my motion, the spirit of my motion is to further keep it moving along um, so that relatively quickly we can obtain coverage. Okay, thank you. Director Brown? Yeah, so uh, we've spoken uh, a lot about the different um, options that we have for insurance um, in formation committee. Um, and Bob has talked to us about how he's reached out to SDRMA, the Special Districts Risk, Risk Management Authority, and Alliant uh, SDRMA being the one that is in coordination with CSDA. And what we've really found is because we are so new and because um, it's kind of unclear, um, we're, we're a different kind of entity in a lot of ways given the way that we're chartered, um, there are some not some concerns, but there are definitely, there's a hesitantness uh, on behalf of some organizations that we've reached out and, com and private companies to want to underwrite this. Um, and this uh, price that we've been getting given for $3,200 for um, these things, um, this is very competitive pricing. Um, if you compare this to other special districts in town, so for example, the IVRPD, it's a little bit different of a situation given that they have uh, their parks insured mm -hmm. and they have liability for that um, and they have a full staff and whatnot and workers, but um, they pay $17,000 a year just as a point of context. Um, I think that we should really consider moving forward on this and we're not agendized to do that right now, but I think that it's the direction that we should move and I think that um, based off of um, some more research I've done about GS uh, RMA, they're uh, um, really specialized in small and medium-sized special districts, which is, I really think, what we're going to be for the foreseeable future. <coughs> um, and I think that this, like I said, this is excellent pricing. Uh, and so I, I think that we really should move forward on this, because I agree with George 100%. We don't want to be uninsured for very long. Right. So perhaps as a next step, we can direct uh, direct your guys to uh, bring us back a contract. Mm -hmm. would, would that be good? Because right now, that's none of us great. have seen a contract. Yeah, that's that sounds great. great. Yeah, that'd be great. OK. Uh, motion? Yeah, I'm, I'll move that we direct director guys to uh, <coughs> solicit a specific contract agreement with um, Golden State Risk Management. Golden State Management. Risk, G-S-R-M. A. A. 
with GSRMA um, for their comprehensive general liability insurance. Right? Okay. I'll second that. Seconded by Geis. Um, Seconded by Geis. I'm sorry, Hedges. My right bad. <laughs> uh, and Will, as soon as you have it, please just read it back. Right. So it's the motion to direct Director Geis to solicit a specific contract agreement with Golden State Risk Management Authority for their comprehensive liability insurance. Excellent. Okay. Is there any public comment? None. Any more board comment? Oh, I see uh, a hand go up back there. Um, <coughs> so general, comprehensive general liability coverage. Um, it covers bodily injury and property damage, personal injury, public officials' errors and omissions, automobile liability, contractual liability, employment practices liability, pollution liability, and crime bond coverage. Just for the CSD. And it's standard for um, government agencies and boards to have such insurance. Thank you for your question. Um, any other board comment? Director Freeman? You would have to know when they say that we have to be enrolled in various uh, enrolled in various programs. Uh, participation in all applicable programs. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining that's kind of like when you get fire insurance that you have to do certain things to your buildings in order to uh, um, continue to be insured by them. I'm wondering if you have any idea of what kinds of things that We'll are you seeing it here? Uh, I think I think the these are the CSD expanded offering services right below the numbers, um, like your three, three, oh. I think the my, I read it to think these are the applicable programs. Well, this is saying the Golden State Risk Management Authority requires participation in all applicable programs, and uh, right, we should clarify what that is. Yeah, and the other thing that I totally forgot to mention is that I want to clarify. Um, is that so we're subject to re-underwriting as we expand our offering and services so does that mean that if we hire a parking attendant to do some sort of parking enforcement then we're going to get re-underwritten or does that mean that when we go to LAFCO and activate <coughs> more powers and then that's when we get re-underwritten um, and maybe that's just maybe I'm just confused on that well, but I'd like to get clarification on I think this, um, well. this number is based off um, just our board operating right now but were we to uh, begin to provide a service, I would imagine um, re-underwriting would be considered. Yeah, I mean, if it's like any other insurance company, they're going to want they're going to want us to tell them everything we do. Yeah, what are our exposures? Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. that's right. And so, I mean, that's just I think a big thing that we all need to understand going forward in terms of some of the services we talked about providing at this point have been services where it would be as simple as us contracting with another agency and then they would assume the liability and it wouldn't really affect our operations that much but some of them are a little bit different than that so we just need to be thinking about that in the back of our mind going forward as well but i think it's great that we're uh, soliciting a service agreement oh yeah definitely often things for Very us to excited. consider mm -hmm. in the weeks ahead um did we have that right back um well could you just read that back one more time please motion to direct director death to solicit a specific contract agreement from Golden State Risk, Man uh, Risk Management Authority for their comprehensive liability insurance. Excellent. Thanks so much. Any more public comment? None. Any more board comment? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose? Any abstentions? So <coughs> ordered. The motion passes 5-0 to directors absent. All right. And... Um, We'll now go into uh, item 4.4, review and take action regarding legal services proposal. Uh, consider recommendations from the formation committee regarding a proposal received for the provision of legal services from Allishire and Winder, LLP. Uh, we're very glad um, to have Ross Trindle here tonight uh, from the firm uh, to uh, make a presentation and talk with the board. Um, before that, if Director Brandt, you want to just introduce this and what the recommendation of the committee is. Uh, before you do that. Uh, because it's, because there's, it's been disclosed that uh, Ross has made personal contributions to the Alumni Association, uh, I'm going to recuse myself it's for the next any item. discussion of this or participation. Thank you. Thank okay. you again for this. So uh, Director Thurlow is recusing himself uh, from this discussion and decision. Uh, Director Brent. Yeah, so uh, Ross reached out to us in formation committee and, and came and gave a, a wonderful presentation just kind of about 
who he is, um, and I will let him kind of go through some of that. Um, but um, it, I think that, uh, or so he presented us his proposal at the last uh, meeting, uh, or this con this contract for legal services uh, that he and his firm, uh, Alishire and Winder, is it Alishire or Alishire? Alishire and Winder, um, this uh, agreement that we could enter into with them. Um, and so um, what the committee really wanted to do is because we all know that the board has taken previous action to solicit pro bono legal services from the, these three different organizations, uh, Santa Barbara Women Lawyers, the uh, Bar Association, and the third one, which I can never remember, um, Legal but Aid Legal Aid Foundation, that's right. Um, uh, but we wanted to forward this to the board and have it included in the overall discussion uh, about uh, legal services. Um, and so here it is. And with that, uh, Ross, if you'd like to give us a quick presentation about who you are. Sure. If you'd like to share, you can, uh, I'm happy to sit wherever. With, I'm good right here as long as I'm on camera. Oh, get the right place? Okay. So it's on the record. Uh, thank you, President Bertrand, and uh, thank you for that summation, uh, Director Brandt. Uh, my name is Ross Trindle. I am a, I've been working with uh, Alice Sharon Weiner currently. Uh, I've been a practicing attorney. I'm in my 14th year of practice, and I have been representing public entities, public agencies, and public employees for my uh, entire career. Uh, I've spent about half that time, roughly, uh, doing a general counsel work, which is uh, serving as the attorney for public entities uh, representing the agency. Uh, but I've also, I also do uh, split my practice with litigation. Uh, I'm admitted for all the courts of California, federal district courts in uh, Southern California, Central District and Southern District, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and a couple of the uh, courts of appeals at the state level. So uh, I have been on both sides of the issues in counseling organizations on policy and procedure, how to implement those policies and procedures, uh, as well as defending those policy decisions in court. Uh, so I've been on both sides of it. Uh, I, I'm a UCSB graduate. I graduated in 99 from the Law Society program, which I was very sad to hear no longer exists. Uh, I've lived in the community. I lived on Trigo. I've lived at the Francisco Torres before it was Santa Catalina. And I've worked in the community. Uh, for those of you who are here long enough, you may remember the Good Earth Restaurant over on Fairview. I worked there for a while. Also the Paper Star downtown. Uh, I worked there for a while as well. So I've been connected to the community and have stayed engaged in the community through the Alumni Association. And when I saw that uh, a local organization was coming together to promote some type of legal entity to represent the interests of Isla Vista, I started watching the issue. And then I saw that the measure passed. Unfortunately, the funding mechanism did not pass with it. And uh, I've basically been following the, the progress of everyone at the, uh, involved in this board uh, since your first meeting. And it became apparent that both myself and my firm might be able to offer some assistance on the, the legal side of things. Uh, personally, I'm general counsel for a, a special district in Southern California. My firm represents 21 cities uh, up and down uh, the state of California, from small urban, uh, Arvin in uh, Kern County to Sassoon City up in the, the, the Delta area, uh, to large cities like Cerritos and Carson. Locally, we also represent the city of Fillmore and the city of Lompoc. So our attorneys and our firm are familiar with the, the differences that can arise from certain regional, uh, uh, certain regional particularities and peculiarities. Um, what else can I say? Uh, our firm does 99% public entity work. Uh, in addition to the cities, we represent uh, a number of uh, nine uh, special districts, uh, including one that I, I mentioned before. And we also represent the number of agencies as special counsel, either litigation, water counsel, CEQA, which is environmental, uh, pretty much you name it. Anything having to do with public entities and public employees, uh, my firm handles that. Uh, generally, our approach as a firm, and my personal philosophy is, is that you know, if the, the board decides to, to retain my firm and, and have me as general counsel, I don't act as the eighth uh, board member. My job is not to. Uh, uh, come up with policy, my, my goal and my job is to provide you the legal framework for the directors to chart a policy course to help enact those policies and to defend those policies if need be, and really help free up the time of the board to handle policy issues to help the residents of the district. Um, so I represent the entity. I don't represent any one particular board member. Uh, I represent all of the board members as the legislature for this, for this, uh, for this district. 
Um, so I, I work closely with general managers and staff and interns, whoever it is that you have available to uh, help provide things like uh, templates. Uh, Director Brandt pr provided a form a staff report. Those are the types of things that we have readily available. Uh, we can help you create timelines. I could probably pass to you an 85% complete policy manual that covers all of the things that the district would need to cover uh, as a special district. Um, I've taught classes on the Public Records Act uh, on the exemptions. I've uh, litigated Public Records Act cases. Um, so that's an integral part of uh, everything that a CSD does and it's a, an integral part of providing transparency to constituents because in the end that's who the board represents and in the end when you do get funding it's not the board's money individually it's not any individual person's it's the public's money so uh, uh, to kind of illustrate that uh, you may have heard of all the things going on in a small city in Southern California in the city of Bell uh, hmm. my firm went in after uh, all of that corruption was exposed and helped guide the city uh, on put them on the pathway back to being able to represent themselves and to represent their constituents in a way that makes everybody uh, everybody proud. Um, that's all I can think of. Oh, lastly, um, I don't provide donations, nor does my firm. Uh, we don't give any donations to board members, uh, and we don't, as a personal policy, I don't give uh, money to board members and I don't receive gifts. I'm also an, uh, a, a Form 700 filer. As a city attorney, I'm technically a public official, so my finances are available on the FPPC's website. and. Uh, that's it. I'm happy to really here to answer questions. Uh, that's my main goal. Awesome. And thank you so much for that presentation. Before we open it up to questions from the board, I do just want to point out that um, in the attachment that was provided with the initial um, distribution of the agenda, there was one page missing from the proposal. Um, that page is available um, on the back table back there. And it's the first page of Exhibit A, the fee agreement. Um, and it has a number eight at the bottom. So if anyone's interested in that and didn't see it in the initial distribution, um, it's on that back table. Um, and with that, I'm ready to call on board members for questions. Does anyone have a? Yeah, can you talk a little bit about um, what you're proposing um, for the district uh, in terms of what services you feel you can provide? Yes, the, given where the district is right now, uh, that's an excellent question. What we are proposing is is to what are, what's called interim general counsel, which is to guide, help guide the district through these initial steps, uh, so that you're complying with all the myriad aspects of local government law. Uh, it would be a flat fee of two thousand dollars for the year, or for the remainder of the year, I should say, with a, kind of an extended period of time for those uh, for those payments to be made. One of the to be billed in August, payable in September, and the other one uh, to be billed in November, paid at the end of uh, December, uh, and then incidental costs. Um, it's to keep it as lean as possible. Uh, I and my firm understand that the financial situation that the district is in, and uh, it's to really to help put the legal framework in place, the legal foundation in, in place, so that the district can get to the act of governing, uh, which is why you're all here. Uh, at the end of that period of time, uh, it would be up for renegotiation. Uh, we would assist you in putting together a formal RFP if you want to go through that process to have other firms uh, take part. That's part of the uh, that's part of our obligation to assist in that process. If the district did want to uh, have us continue on uh, beyond the six month period at the end of December, then that's something that could be discussed. The, I have a lot of flexibility on uh, fees given the financial situation that the district is currently in. Uh, but uh, if at any point the district wants to terminate the agreement, the termination provisions are set forth very clearly uh, in the legal services agreement. But this would be to provide general counsel services to uh, come to board meetings as, as requested. If, and if that's all of them in the beginning, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if it's only one a month, that's perfectly fine. It's whatever the board's pleasure is uh, to provide any guidance on in terms of questions about parliamentary procedure, although I will remark the board has a very good grasp of parliamentary procedure, uh, <laughs> to provide uh, legal guidance on any issues that come up in terms of insurance. Uh, normally, uh, for clients, uh, that would come through me. I would review the provisions, answer any, any questions that staff usually have. Uh, but if you would want to punt a legal question to me, I would be present to be able to give you the, the legal aspects uh, and, to go, and to walk through that with the board and for the public. 
Uh, this is all transactional uh, types of, of stuff. It is not uh, for litigation services. That would be under uh, a separate um, structure. Uh, although, again, I probably could uh, have a lot of flexibility on how that is handled. Uh, since you're not really out there too much, you don't own any property, you don't have people walking on sidewalks that you have designed and built, you know, there's not a lot, a lot of liability that's that concerned, but you're more focused on making sure that you post agendas uh, timely to make sure you're acting within uh, the, the course and scope of the powers that you have enumerated, et cetera. It's really just those uh, types of legal uh, issues that currently uh, that we would be, I would be providing guidance on specifically. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Director Freeman? Um, <clears throat> so uh, on the, I guess you can call it rates of fee agreement, um, that's listed here, with number four, public finance rates. I'm sorry, I just don't understand what it means. I'm just if you If at a point that the, the district could, uh, would go out and issue bonds, that would be bond council, financing council. That's, that's what that's that right. section refers and, to. And so that's they essentially you're, you, um, different amounts based upon the amount of the bond. Right, because typically the, that the finance, uh, the people in my firm who do the finance, the complexity of the, the encumbrance of the, the bond situation has a direct impact on how much work it takes. Mm -hmm. So not being a bond lawyer, uh, I can't uh, really speak beyond the, generals, uh, the general, generalized uh, comment like I just made. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I have a question for us when we get to that point. Okay, not, uh, we'll get there. Yeah, okay. Cool. Now, one question I have um, that I was just uh, reminded of in something you said um, about RFPs uh, from a st strictly informational question. Um, is it, um, do you know if there are requirements of um, government agencies to put out an RFP when a professional um, services opening happens like this? And Strictly informational. Gen generally speaking, uh, local governments have the ability to contract for very specific services. Legal services it is one that's enumerated in the government code. Right. Um, most cities and public entities follow an RFP process to inform the community, to keep them engaged, and to be transparent. But in certain situations that arise, uh, there is flexibility in being able to do that without an RFP process. For example, in an interim capacity, uh, an interim general manager, an interim legal counsel, right. uh, whatever might be necessary to keep the, the, the legal entity, the district, functioning uh, and moving along in the meantime. Uh, where it is required is something like a public contracting. If you're going to go out and bid a public to replace sidewalks uh, within mm -hmm. the district, that that's would be right. something that's, that's under a different provision, that's under the code. contract code as yeah. opposed to the government okay. code. Thank you for that information. Sure. Um, any more uh, questions? Uh, Clarifying questions on yeah, this agreement. Yeah, I, I just had one answer. more thing regarding uh, the the fee agreement. Um, so it, it's uh, it's expressed in here that um, this is a, a, a flat rate that you'd be charging for your services. Um, and talk about a little bit just about how uh, that's I guess different from what your firm firm would typically uh, ask. Because I know we've talked about how you have a lot of flexibility and whatnot. Just talk a little bit more about that. Sure. The, the primary service delivery models are either on a billable hour uh, uh, method or under a flat rate. And under a flat rate, you will get a set number of hours. In this case, we don't have a set limit because the, the amount of legal help that you may need is going to fluctuate. So I didn't want, and my firm agrees, that we didn't want to hamstring the board with you know, a 10-hour cap because you may need 15 or 20 hours in the beginning. You know, we, we see this as an opportunity to assist the local government entity to get on its feet. And then when the time mm -hmm. is right, uh, if you want to let an RFP uh, go, that we would have an opportunity to compete you know, with everybody else to, to retain the business. Uh, but in the meantime, it's uh, our founders are very much, um, they, they are interested in serving the people who serve the public. And, and it's very much a part of the, the firm's culture. It's very much a part of the firm's leadership and that uh, We've all been municipal lawyers our, our entire lives in one capacity or another, sometimes multiple capacities. And uh, you know, all politics is local. Well, you know, progress is local as far as we're concerned. When you help local governments uh, serve their constituents well, then that improves. You know, that improves the communities and, and improves the, the fabric that binds everybody together. It's a, it's a little philosophical or a high fluid, but uh, the folks who work in my firm 
and our in municipal law, we don't do it because the money's good, we do it because it's most difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I'm sorry. So the other, the uh, billable hour is you pay a set uh, dollar value per hour of time built. We build in uh, increments of six minutes, which is 0 0.1. So every hour is divided up into tenths. Uh, and in flat fee, it is what it is. Uh, you pay that rate no matter how much we work, uh, no matter how many hours we build. Uh, one more question I have. So um, this speaks of uh, reimbursable expenses upon uh, one of which is um, travel costs and since this isn't near uh, the location um, well any of the offices of um, of the firm um, any commuting to our meetings would be um, a reimbursable expense generally the firm does mileage in accordance with the IRS reimbursable rate uh, the amount of that that gets picked up by the firm versus the amount that would be charged uh, to the district is something that we have a lot of flexibility on uh, and if for some reason a meeting went late and I stayed the night, I would pick up the, the cost of my own because I know the district yeah. isn't in the place to be able to do that yet. Well, that, well uh, that's uh, really uh, that's good to be generous of you. Um, and uh, but with that also, uh, as far as getting consultation over the phone, um, that's something that can be done in place of uh, having you uh, commute up here. It is all, all uh, the time. It part of the. What we tried to provide is, is flexibility. I believe uh, Director Thurlow said nimbleness, and I think that's appropriate. Where the district is, where this board is, and where it wants to go, there are a lot of hurdles in between here and there. And so to lock the, the directors into only one way of getting there is a disservice to the directors who were elected and appointed, uh, also to you know, the residents of the district. You need to be able to have flexibility. So. With that in mind, you know, this agreement provides, we're gonna provide your legal services, we're gonna be your lawyer if you want us. Uh, we're gonna make it as cost efficient as we possibly can. We will defer costs uh, if needed in order to get you up and running. And then once there's some funding in place, we'll, we'll revisit the topic at that point, but now's not the time to be, uh, you know, <laughs> Pennywise and Pound Foolish. And um, so that, that was all the clarifying questions I had. No more at this time from, from you guys. We can always come back to, to that. Not me right now. OK. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll say where I'm at at this point. Uh, I'm over impressed by, by this proposal. Um, I am very appreciative of the time that you and your firm have put into uh, to preparing this um, and your obvious uh, commitment and dedication to improving this community. Um, this comes at a time um, that I think it's really important that we are um, looking to obtain legal counsel, um, similar to what George was saying earlier about um, every day we're operating without insurance. is like driving a car without insurance. Um, I think this uh, kind of ties in with that type of thinking. Um, and this uh, proposal that's, that's been presented, it seems um, extremely doable. Um, it seems very practical and reflective of where we're at as a district and I think provides an excellent opportunity um, to not only um, help our board uh, move forward in a way that, that we're following the law and um, complying with everything that we need to be, but ultimately serving our constituents and um, continuing to build the framework for uh, the, su the successful operation of the district. Um, so at, at this time, I'm definitely um, very interested in moving forward to enter this agreement. Um, and that's the end of my comment for now. Director Hedges? Um, I, I find uh, your presentation refreshing. Um, when, uh, when a professional, um, and typically we think of professionals as having sort of mercenary motives, despite the uh, depth of their wisdom and so forth, but you have come at this, uh, in, in a sense, as an amateur. In, in, the, in the best sense of what the word amateur means, it's someone who does what they do for love and not for a mercenary motive. And uh, you um, have uh, returned to the place of your youth to uh, uh, kind of uh, come alongside uh, a, a new effort, something that is new in this community that um, uh, I, I just have to say, I find that quite refreshing. Thank you. Okay. Director Freeman? 
So I, the question that I have for, for us, not for um, is the, um, so to be, and it's like it's two parts. I want to verify before I go to the second part that we're, we're actually looking right now at just signing and agreeing to work with uh, Trindle. Like that's actually like a that is, that's something that we're to, to, to enter so, into this. So we agreement. just approved a policy on. Do we not? I've got so many of these. Yes, we did. We did actually approve our policy on contractor selection review for professional services. How does that apply to our process now for uh, just signing with with Trindle? Which, I, for what it's worth, I actually would just do. But now I'm like, we just approved a process that would not let us do that. That's um, that's actually a, a really good question. I'm at, I'm at the same point as you where <laughs> yeah. I want to figure out a way to make this work. Yeah, no, um, yeah. But um, let's um, let let's put that on the back burner for a minute. We'll we'll come okay. back. Yeah, let's, that. let's talk more about this, look this into substance. Um, but um, I mean, another thing that that makes me uh, feel really good about this is um, that, as as proposed, there would be uh, two um, two payments, and um, the first of which is a few months down the road, where we have commitments for money coming in um, that haven't been uh, that haven't been transferred yet. But those are solid commitments, mm -hmm. um, where I'm confident that we would be able to um, pay this um, both of the payments. That that's definitely a, that was one of my my biggest concerns about how soon we could enter into this. So I'm, I'm glad to see uh, glad to see that provision in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to echo everything that has been stated thus far and thank Ross for your work and putting this together and really reaching out to us and, and bringing it before us both at formation committee over the last uh, month and a half or so, um, but also um, just in the work that you do. Um, and I mean, I think it's clear. I think we're all on the same page that we understand this is this is a deal, um, and this is really comes at a time when I think we really need it. Um, and I'm I was overly joyed to see this um, in terms of um, what a good opportunity that I think that it could be for the district. Um, so I don't I don't really have anything to add in, in so far as that that hasn't already been said. Um, and then. Um, I actually just looked over this awesome policy that we drafted, and I'm not concerned um, <laughs> because the the first sentence of uh, the second paragraph is, upon a decision of the board of directors to solicit qualifications and proposals from interested parties, the board of directors shall appoint an ad hoc committee to be responsible for reviewing um, and recommending proposals to the board of directors for selection. Um, we have not ruled as a board to uh, solicit qualifications and proposals. Um, which I mean, we're narrowly getting around that policy, and either way, yeah. we have yeah. to figure out a way. But yeah. uh, but we uh, we never uh, we never declared as a board to solicit um, qualifications mm -hmm. and proposals. No, I think that the the outreach that we did was outreach, um, mm -hmm. and it wasn't it wasn't obviously not a request for proposals that was formal at all. Director Prima. Okay, so is the idea then that we're going to uh, move to have you sign it right now so that we can get some advice on our next agenda item? I don't know how that works. Um, I don't know how that works. <laughs> well, I think that there there also is there's another side of it. Like you, I would like you'd want to sign it, but then you would also want to act as a board to appoint this person as the mm -hmm. board council. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I actually um, I wrote a draft motion. Um, that's probably incomplete, but I think it has a lot of the main things that I would like to see in there should we uh, move forward with this. And it's a motion to appoint G. Ross Trindle III as interim general counsel and to hire Alishire and Winder, LLP, therefore to render all legal services as specified in the submitted, quote, contract services agreement for interim general counsel legal services. Dash Isla Vista Community Services District, Attachment A, and to authorize the board president to execute this agreement on behalf of the IBCSD. Those were, I think, the the um, components that we'd be looking to do in action. Um, and the what I read in quotes, that's just the simply the title of this document. And the language before that is um, one of the first um, first lines in the document. That's right. Yeah, I see this on a, an appointment. Yeah, is that the type of action that you all are are looking? Mm -hmm. I do? think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Um, and maybe since it's authorizing uh, the board president to be the, the signator on this, someone else uh, move it. Yeah, sure. Um, I move to appoint G. Ross Trindle the third as interim general counsel and to hire Alishire and Winder LLP, therefore to render all legal services as specified in the submitted contract services agreement for interim general counsel legal services dash Isla Vista Community Services District attachment A and to authorize the board president to execute this agreement on behalf of the Isla Vista Community Services District. And I would second that. Okay, so moved by Grant, um, seconded by Hedges. Uh, one thing that perhaps we should clarify is um, in when uh, attachment A is in um, the parentheses, yeah. um, attachment A of the board packet, um, not to be confused with Probably. exhibit A oh, okay. of, um, of the contract. We want to make sure we're not just approving that. Um, and now, should we... Wait, so that's not attachment A, that's sa attachment C. Oh, yeah, great point. So mm -hmm. attachment C. Yeah, and if you want, we can walk this over to Will. That would yeah, probably yeah. be the... <laughs> yes, that we will do. Um, here, in fact, you can have it now. Clarification, friendly. Friendly, okay. Good. The, the board packet. The yep. um, and within that parenthesis, should we uh, put with the addition of page one of yeah, my, a? or yeah, page um, it's, I believe it's page eight of the agreement was the one that was left out. So yeah. now I'm guessing uh, d does eight correspond with the rest of the pages in? in yes. The? Okay. Great. I think this is all really good. I have one more clarifying question, but I'll wait until after we vote. Well, as uh, Will's typing it up, why don't you go ahead? Oh, I was just going to ask, um, uh, speak briefly about uh, some of the other non-municipal um, lawyering, I guess is the word, that you've done, or that you've, uh, law that you've studied. Oh, sure. Uh, initially, I went to law school at Santa Clara with an intent to go into intellectual property uh, and uh, patents and trademarks and uh, licensing. I worked for Sony Computer Entertainment America. They make the PlayStation series of consoles. Uh, you know, I had a law clerk position there. I worked in the, the division that uh, um, handled all of the uh, business and legal affairs. Uh, so I was calling up lawyers and getting licensing agreements for marks to show up in video games, uh, uh, doing talent agreements for voice actors, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I also put together Sony's initial export compliance uh, protocol through the Department of Commerce uh, for the export of encryption uh, because all of Sony's disks are encrypted. So when you sell them, you're technically exporting a, an encryption technology. So there was a whole process that we had to go through for that. Uh, I uh, was a law clerk and intern at a law firm in Singapore uh, while I was in law school. I worked on uh, international licensing agreements uh, for the largest uh, IP law firm in Southeast Asia. Uh, I traveled through Southeast Asia as, as part of that. Um, and uh, I, by the time I finished law school, the tech market had completely fallen apart and some very large law firms had gone under. So. Uh, at that point, I needed to pivot to something else, and through a friend through church, I got uh, connected with uh, my first law firm, and they did municipal uh, uh, defense, and I've been doing it ever since. Uh, types of issues that I've worked on, uh, specifically I follow the intersection of uh, local government and technology. Uh, I, f I follow those issues, I um, write on them, I handle cases on, uh, on them, for example, uh, drones, uh, police body cameras, uh, the uh, implementation of, of encryption, uh, the use of encryption, cybersecurity, uh, also uh, advanced license plate uh, reader technology, facial rec recognition technology, 
uh, you know, video recording, I mean, pretty much you name it, if it has a tech bent and there's a, there's a way that it intersects with local government, I've, I've been involved in a case with it, or I've read about it, or I've you know, spoken about it, uh, the way technology is used in complying with the Public Records Act, for instance. Uh, like I said before, I've, I've taught on the, the Public Records Act and the exemptions. Uh, so uh, a number of my cases have been uh, police liability cases where I've represented law enforcement. Uh, I've also represented firefighters uh, who have been exercising their duties and were involved in a, a large traffic collision. Uh, I've done everything from slip and falls on sidewalks uh, to uh, trying to derail multi-billion dollar uh, tax measures. Uh, so it's, it's kind of run the gamut uh, from, uh, from very small, you know, a couple thousand dollars on up to 40 billion. And it just kind of depends on what the issue is. Did answer your question? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Great. I wanted Thank to you. highlight the, the initial thing because I think we might have a mutual yeah. interest with one of our board members. Uh, now, uh, I just actually remembered two uh, more questions. And one's in regard to Director Freeman's question about whether or not you'd be able to assist us immediately. <laughs> uh, and my question on that is I see you're not the signator on here. Technically, to execute the, the agreement, it requires the managing partner of the firm. Uh, that being said, I, I can provide the services under the agreement uh, in, in immediately, uh, subject to you know full execution later. If I act as though we're performing the agreement, then it is as if it has been signed. So yes, if the board would, would want me to sit for the remainder of the meeting and provide legal advice, I'm perfectly capable and legally able to do so. Thank you for that. Uh, and then one more thing. Um, in the past, the board has received um, at times, cease and desist letters and cure and correct demands. At what point does that turn into, uh, say, the litigation fee? If we were to have a closed session meeting about anticipated litigation or, um, or something of that nature, mm -hmm. and this is not sending you or your firm to represent us in court, is that part of the general counsel flat rate, or yes. would that be litigated? It becomes a litigation uh, issue when a case is filed or an administrative case is filed. Mm -hmm. uh, so. But the advisal on the receipt, for example, if you receive a claim uh, or uh, you know, some other uh, paperwork. Mm. I, I know that the district's being uh, sued by a, a resident uh, about some, some issues with a potential Brown Act or something like that. You know, that would be an example of litigation. Uh, if someone comes in and gives you a cease and desist letter and you want to discuss that in closed session as to how to respond or if, if at all, then that's something that would be covered under general services. Thank you. All right, that was it for my questions. And Will, you said that Spencer's shared on this document you're he is, typing? Yeah. Cool, so we could just pull that up, up here and uh, I'll read it from here. Motion to appoint G. Ross Trindle III as interim general counsel and to hire Alishire and Winder LLP, therefore to render all legal services as specified in the submitted quote, contract services agreement for interim general counsel legal services dash Isla Vista Community Services District, uh, in parentheses, attachment C of the June 6th regular meeting, and to authorize the board president to execute this agreement on behalf of the IVCSD. And Director Brandt, could you just throw in with the addition of page eight, which was made public at the meeting? Friendly. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, in the in the quotation. Okay, so that changes parenthesis attachment C of the June sixth regular meeting with the addition of page eight as presented at the meeting. Close parenthesis and to authorize the pre the board president to execute this agreement on behalf of the IVCSD. It's friendly. It's friendly. friendly. Jay, are you pretty happy with uh, yeah. that wording? I am too. Um, all right, we've had a lot of discussion up here. Any public comment? Uh, there has not been a decision made. Yeah, thank you. Freezing out there. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Uh, for the record, Director Thurlow walked in um, during a moment of silence. But um, any public comment? All right. Uh, Mr. Trindle, do you have 
anything else to say that we haven't covered? Not at all. I'm ready to get to work. Okay. Um, and I don't want to be redundant, but this is really important, so I'm going to just read it through without interruption. Uh, motion to appoint G. Ross Strindle III as interim general counsel and to hire Alishire and Winder LLP, therefore to render all services as specified in the submitted contract services agreement for interim general counsel legal services dash Isla Vista Community Services District. Um, in parentheses, attachment C of the June 6th regular meeting with the addition of page 8 as presented at the meeting, and to authorize the board president to execute this agreement on behalf of the IVCSD. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstention? So ordered. Motion passes. Um, 4 0 with one abstention and two directors absent. Uh, welcome to the team. Uh, Mr. Trindle. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you so much. Thank you. So cool. Where do you want me to sit? Uh, <laughs> you can sit right you close to Will if you'd what, like. Do you want a table? I can sit here. Uh, just wherever I am able to provide guidance <laughs> yeah. while being unobtrusive. Awesome. Uh, Jay will get you your own uh, table. Nice. Uh, there it is. With uh, our extra heaven. seat. <laughs> yeah. We're all I know. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is like oh my. major. I know. I know. I know. I know. Major. This is a big. This um, is a big and now big we are going to leave this item, and I'm going to bring Director Thurlow back yes. in. Yes, sounds great. Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome to you. Yeah. All right, where's my agenda? Will, are you uh, hooked up? I can do it, yeah. And are you turned on, Jake? Okay, um, so we'll now move forward with the agenda. Um, to item 4.5, independent contractor, um, interim general manager, receive a presentation from the formation committee and consider recommendations from the formation committee regarding an RFP, a draft agreement, and process for selecting interim general manager, um, attachments D1, D2, and D3. And uh, there's a presentation accompanied by this. I see they're figuring it out. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just start off by saying, so Will's going to be giving the presentation. Um, what we're reviewing are recommendations from the formation committee, um, which, yeah, if you, you want to get people back in the room for this. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? I'm I know. I think I better send gossip text. <laughs> I'm sure that's what Darcel is doing. Does George know that he can come back in the room? Yes. Ah, I see. Hey, Jay. Um, Will's welcome to use my computer for simplicity. Do we want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, well here, oh, he's going to need to email it to me. Oh. Or no, it's a, it's a yeah. Google Slides. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't been showing this. I'll do it now. You want it to your CSD? We'll get the get the plug then. Maybe we have some we have some actions to report. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice to meet you. All right, so this will just take a moment. Just present from back here. Yeah, whatever, whatever works for you. If you want to sit down or if you want to do this, perfect. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, you're going to want, what do I do? Where I see my mouse up there. Where's your, uh, oh, we'll pull it up, but you got it right here. Well, so, I don't, my mouse isn't on here anymore. But you can put it back. So, move it up. I think you have to go down. Uh, to try going up. Try going to the left. Uh, oh, uh -huh. it's back. Okay. Now and then just drag this tab over there. Okay. And Excellent. then oh. click. Oh, go back. And then click present. It's the button right next to the W and the S. Excellent. Okay, we're ready. Sorry for the delay. Great. Yeah, so this is something that um, Director Brand and I put together with uh, Collective Resources and then uh, put into a PowerPoint. So it'll be very general information um, about sort of the general manager position and what um, the formation committee recommendations were regarding this position. All right, so next slide. All right, so this is some of the legislative background. Um, under the California government codes, uh, the board of directors shall appoint a general manager, um, and then the board of directors shall set compensation, if any, for the general manager. Um, these two sort of point out why um, the formation committee believes that a general manager can be pro bono, because it's compensation, if any. Next. All right, so the need for the general manager um, would start with clerical assistance. Um, Startup administrative needs um, in the areas of financial accounting and implementation of policy. Um, a strategic plan for the um, or a strategic plan to guide the district. Um, set goals, um, operations, and goals. A solution to begin to address the ongoing issues of directors serving in legislative and administrative roles, and internal operations to be fulfilled as the board begins discussion of service provision. So uh, in the absence of a general manager, directors are forced to fulfill many administrative duties. Um, president of the board assigned financial and accounting duties. President and secretary of the board schedule meetings, uh, prepare board materials and post notices. Secretary performs record keeping. President and chairs of the uh, president and chairs of committees have all been delegated at least one operational task. A lot of this can be consolidated with a general manager. Um, so it's sort of the point of having one. Um, all of this is background discussion um, that the board has and formation committee have had regarding the general manager, so we can skip through most of that since most people were there for it. All right, so the overview of the position, this is probably one of the most important slides. Um, it's going to be a one-year contract, um, and the uh, interim general manager is going to be an independent contractor. Uh, the district will not explicitly instruct the contractor as to how they will fulfill the duties of the position. Um, there's going to be an RFP regarding um, how they think the position should be fulfilled. So the interim general manager will uh, use the independent experience and discretion to perform their duties to assist the board. The interim general manager will have an independent worksite, tools, and contact information. Um, the interim general manager will not be compensated. So in the RFP, um, this is going to go through uh, what's been presented. It should be in the agenda. So I remember what attachment. Um, D2 or D3, one of the two. D3. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, so the overview of the, IBCS, uh, the IBCSD and the RFP statement of period of uh, desired or, um, agreement, again it's a one year contract, and that it's a pro bono position. And then that quote that's up there is pulled directly out of yeah. the proposal. Sorry, it's really small, can't read. Don't worry about it, no problem. Um, okay, yeah, so the statement of character, um, as I mentioned, government code 61250. Um, 
the outline status of the newly created district, the structure of the board of directors, uh, the list of the district's eight initial, uh, eight initial services, um, provisionary powers, and power to levy a utility user tax, um, which is sort of why there is enough funding for the position um, for the interim general manager. Hopefully there will be for a full-time position once that's reached, but um, that's for a further discussion. Um, so this description is also going to describe the uniqueness of the community. Um, hopefully it will be someone familiar with Isla Vista already, um, would be the idea is that so they wouldn't have to try to learn about the community as they go. Okay, so the scope of work. Um, this is an outline, again, that's going to be in the um, RFP in the um, agenda. This is basically an outline of things that would be great if they could do. Um, but again, the board cannot direct them to do any of these things. It's just sort of an agreement that they understand this is what's expected. So if, we, if you actually want to step back and just read those, because I think that this is a really important part of what we're asking, is what we're asking our scope of work to be. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's going to be creation, preparation, and provision of product necessary for the conduct of meetings of the board of directors and subcommittees. The assistance in the creation of the district financial and accounting structure and the creation of financial and accounting procedures um, would be to design a budget process um, and an FY 2007 2018 budget. Or sorry, 2017 2018 budget. Um, and to conduct special projects in coordination with the district's vision and mission. Uh, the development of a strategic plan to guide the vision of the board of directors with activities, actions, and needed and needs of the district, and to confer with interim legal counsel and secure legal assistance as necessary. So the timing and other requirements, the um, distribution window for the RFP uh, will begin June 7th or 21st. The window will close June 16th or July 11th. Um, this is just an outline for a timing procedure. Um, again, as there's two um, directors absent from this meeting, uh, it's probably something that the board won't want to make a decision on right away. Um, questions will be directed to the um, to President Bertrand. Proposals to be mailed to the third district office, seven hard copies and one electric or one electronic. And here's just a calendar um, that highlights the dates and sort of gives you a visual idea of the window for the RFP. And again, this can be shifted probably down two weeks. Um, yeah, if you go to the next slide, there's actually an, an alternative that has the, the other two weeks. Um, Okay, so the proposal requirements, um, title page, table of contents, um, trans uh, transmittal letter proposal. Uh, within the proposal will be a statement of independence from the district, description of professional relationships with directors, qualifications and experience, work plan for fulfillment of desired scope of services. So the purpose is to demonstrate the qualifications, capacity and vision of the proposer. The work plan um, will outline how the proposer could accomplish the desired scope of work and includes a time estimate. The evaluation process will be, the proposals will be evaluated by committee. Um, the top candidates may be invited for interview. Formation um, committee declined to make recommendations regarding the evaluation committee procedures and makeup. Fiscal impact, uh, there will be no immediate fiscal impact. The position um, is pro bono. Uh, the committee desires to provide the interim general manager with a stipend to cover the loss of liability insurance should the district raise an appropriate amount of money. The stipend could cover certain travel expenses as well. Formation committee desires to develop a plan to raise revenue in order to provide the interim general manager with this stipend. Can you go back a sec? Mm -hmm. Can you, can you, is that a typo? Cover the loss? Yeah, that's a typo. Oh. Cover the lack of liability insurance? Cost. 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 Okay. All right. Thank because you. as we've discussed right. in the past at Formation Committee, okay. the liability insurance that the district has does not apply or cover its contractors. Okay. 
Okay, so here are the options the formation committee put together. Um, approve the formation committee's recommendations as is. Um, approve the alternative recommendations, complete with the alternative calendar dates, or take no action at this time. Um, and other modifications per the board of directors uh, conversation. And if you scroll through, there are two different recommendations that outline kind of what the two, the, the first two of the options, um, both uh, floating the RFP and then floating the RFP with alternative dates. Um, so you can see those there. Um, and I'll just say um, thank you for that, Will. It was a great presentation tonight. Thank you. We, uh, as formation committee, um, have been working on this as kind of our main thing uh, for a while. Um, and we regret that Director Geis can't be here today to uh, talk more about it as well. Um, but I've been taking the lead on a lot of this in terms of preparing both the RFP, uh, the presentation, and then uh, the committee report as well. Um, Director Geis um, is the one who brought us the contract uh, that is before you today, the, uh, the contract for future execution. and. Um, I would just say, uh, again, I, I, one of our, the big thing that we want to highlight is that um, with the status quo, the way that things are being done at the district, because we have the situation where directors are handling things that are fundamentally administrative tasks and also serving in that legislative role, we really see a blurring of the lines that I think is something that we're going to have to cease eventually um, and this is really something that I don't think I have to sell it to you all the, the fact that we need uh, a general manager um, this proposal that we put together we really think that uh, it does that and I'd be happy to take any questions that you have uh, right off the bat um, I'm trying to think if there was anything as the presentation was happening that I wanted to further clarify but I'll just allow if anyone has questions I'd be happy to answer them I'll start off. Um, first of all, great job to you and the formation committee. This is fantastic work, um, very thorough, and um, really points to a direction. Now, my only concern with this is um, found in Exhibit A, the third paragraph, where it describes that the IBCSD Board of Directors will not direct the work of the general manager. Now. That was something that I'm interested in hearing what the thought of on it was, because perhaps there's a really good reason that I'm not thinking about um, to set that up. But in, in all of um, my understanding of the position of a general manager of the special district, it's to serve at the will of the board and um, the direction of the board. And that was my experience in, in my prior office. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I thought we were looking for here. But what was the thought for... Um, for that line, the IVCSD Board of Directors will not direct the work of the general manager. So this goes back to some conversations that the committee had. The big thing that we have been prioritizing is being able to float a proposal that has pro bono legal services um, and also uh, get into an agreement with someone where we wouldn't have to consider them an employee and um, therefore uh, pay all of the things that come along with employees, develop personnel policies, all of those things. And uh, if in our interpretation, uh, amateur as it may be, of the IRS regulations and um, those laws that regulate what the line between an employee and an independent contractor is, one of the big ones is whether or not um, the district would be able to regulate the way that the work that is being provided by this uh, by this contractor is provided um, and um, being able to direct that person to do things um, the independent contractor uh, is more uh, isn't isn't meant to be like that um, and so it is kind of a, a little bit of a different situation uh, than you see a, a lot of districts in, entering into um, but with that, there is still precedent for having an independent contractor serve as general manager. Uh, we looked at um, some documents in formation committee, and one of the main ones was um, an agreement between um, a geological hazard abatement district um, and an uh, independent contractor who is performing the position of general manager. And 
that even that was not an interim agreement that was an ongoing agreement um, and it sounded like this um, at least from the uh, recitals in the contract it sounded as though um, the uh, person who was entering into the agreement with the district had previously been serving in the capacity as general manager without having had any sort of an agreement. And I don't think that's something that we would ever want to do. We want to have something more official than that. But it at least seeks to demonstrate the fact that um, this uh, this is something that um, has, is being done by other special districts, uh, albeit uh, a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, but for that, it's being done without the person being directed by the board? Or, or no? In that is so in that contract um, again in our reading of the IRS regulations um, th we want it to be a little more careful uh, and that's why that line is in there they didn't have a line that was specifically like that in their contract um, but we put it in there and that's kind of how we tried to structure it we tried to structure it um, so that we could have uh, a situation where um, there was this idea of a work plan and really emphasizing the fact that this person would be here to assist us in the startup phases of the district um, and hence this is an interim position um, that, that would be reevaluated by the board when it came around um, the after the year-long agreement was up okay thank you any other uh, board questions director Prima? so um, inside of this packet also is a contract um, and I, I look at a lot of contracts, I've signed a lot of contracts. I look at this contract and the thing that I'm, I find most immediately interesting is that there doesn't seem to be any, it, it's, just, it's just an agreement that the contractor will do a bunch of stuff for us. There's no consideration in the contract for them. I don't, I, I'm not entirely certain that this is actually a legally defensible contract. Um, and. That this is actually the reason why I was like super excited by the idea that maybe we'll have uh, somebody who, because this is, this is at not even like the most ludicrously complicated question, like a contract requires consideration, am I correct? If not, like what kind, like what do we need, like can we have a pro bono person and then how would we draft a contract that allows us to actually do that? Yes, that, that's yeah. a good question. Uh, yes, to have a legally binding contract, you do have to have consideration exchange between the two parties. It, but consideration doesn't necessarily have to be monetary. Consideration can be any number of things. Uh, for example, the skills that someone might be acquiring in, in serving in an interim general count, general manager capacity, that could be sufficient consideration on the behalf of one of the contracting parties. Key to a contract is that you have a meeting of the minds as to all the material terms of the contract. And typically these contracts will contain language like you see <coughs> In now, therefore, in consideration of the mutual covenants and conditions contained herein, parties agree as follows. That's, that's usually proxy language for consideration. Other contracts will specifically say, uh, in, in light of consideration, uh, which is hereby acknowledged, uh, that is enough as, as well. So consideration doesn't necessarily have to be monetary. Hmm. Cool. Um, but do we then have to specify the consideration that's non-monetary? Or are you, so you, like, and the wording you just read, was that in the in the contract that it was? Yes. So page okay. one All right. follows now therefore okay. in consideration of the mutual covenants conditions contained herein, the parties agree as follows. Okay. I, if I look through here, there may be a, the specific language of consideration uh, somewhere in here. But uh, as a form, this would be legally sufficient right. for for what it purports to do. Um, if I could elaborate a little bit. My concern from a legal standpoint, it echoes a question that was brought up about directing the general manager and whether the general manager, whether serving in an interim basis, uh, or an acting basis, or a permanent basis, typically a general manager or a city manager takes direction from the legislative body. Uh, that's their function, that's their job, and it's, it's stated they you know, serve at the pleasure of the, of the governing body. Um, when you have an independent contractor type of situation, typically it's when a consulting firm is providing those types of services. So under the government code, public entities can contract out for very specific types of services. One of them is administration, and underneath of that you have uh, a firm can act as an interim uh, general manager in the same way that a firm can act as an interim or legal counsel. 
So if in an independent contractor type of a situation, that's more uh, when you the district is asking for something to be accomplished, for example, building something. Mm -hmm. And the district is not going to require and manage the day-to-day -day goings on of that construction company. It may let or issue an RFP that says we're going to replace all of the sidewalks on Del Playa and install them if there aren't any. And here are the requirements. It's got to follow the building code. Uh, you got to pay prevailing wages, and here are the public contract requirements. But the day-to-day -day sequencing of the construction from start to finish is not something that the district handles at all. It's not involved in that process. And there, the construction company is an independent contractor. When you're talking about someone who is effectively the chief executive of the district, they, I would have significant concerns as to even though you call this a, an independent contractor agreement, that it would be construed by a court to be uh, actually an employment agreement, that they would not be an independent contractor. That would be different if the district was considering retaining a firm to provide the services of a general manager because there you're, the district is employing a corporate entity and not a person who would be considered potentially a public employee with all of the benefits that come with the public employee uh, position. Thank you. And one one thing that um, when after you provided your uh, your uh, statement, mm -hmm. I went back and I looked at actually the contract service agreement that we just entered into with the law firm, mm -hmm. and. Um, in section two, um, part C, it says all legal services shall be coordinated under the direction of the board. Um, but then there's also an independent contractor section, number nine, and within it, it says neither district nor any of its employees shall have any control over the manner, mode, or means by which a and its agents or employees render the services. Yeah. So, so I guess the question is, and, and I'll just give some background off of the what we were basing a lot of our assumptions off of, which is the IRS 20-point test, which is one of the ways that the IRS uh, determines whether or not someone is an independent contractor or an employee. It's not the only thing, and there are certain things that they prioritize more, at least from my understanding, of, um, of, of what would constitute uh, stepping across that line from independent contractor into uh, employee. Um, but I think that one of the things um, that Director Guy spoke about a lot and that we all um, kind of are acting under, under the assumption of is that um, one of the big things is whether or not we control the body of the work that this independent contractor is performing. So in the case, at least here's my understanding, is that in your case, we don't control the way that you are providing us legal services. Um, even though you do serve it at our direction or your firm serves at our direction. So um, in this case, I, th I think that it might be a little different. Do you have any thoughts on, on that or could you elaborate on that? Yeah. Uh, the distinction comes down to, first, I'm going to back up to the IRS yeah. factors. The, under the California Labor Code, they adopt a, a, a factors test in determining whether someone is an independent contractor versus an employee. And a number of those factors, almost all of them mirror in some way, uh, either directly like, quoting the same language as the IRS regulations, uh, or they're very similar there too. And I will say that the list is large, and courts I I I interpret that expansively to find people to be employees rather than independent contractors. So the level of control that the board has in how the person carries out their job is, is one of the most heavily weighted factors in considering whether they're an employee versus an independent contractor. So in the case of the legal services agreement between the district and my firm, uh, the, the question that may come is, here's a contract. We need you to review it to make sure that it's legally sound. The district doesn't get to tell the firm or me how to do that research, where to look, what to go, what, what to, to review, et cetera. You can say, we need a, a professional services agreement for landscaping. Draft that or provide one uh, at, at the next, in time for the next meeting. And then using our independent skill and judgment, we put together what we believe to be a legally sound contract to fit that purpose. 
In the case of a, of a, of a general manager, the general manager is carrying out the day-to-day -day business of the district as a legal entity. Uh, and, and that level of involvement typically tips over into the, the level uh, of involvement where you're more likely to have them to be found to be a, a public employee. or and, and that can be covered by an agreement. I'm, I'm, let me make sure I'm clear. It's not that the, the, the district cannot contract for that. The, the real sticking point is whether the district can have them be designated as an independent contractor. Uh, and in the early days of this uh, of this district, that may be something that can be explored. But I can tell you that from experience and the way that the law uh, is, has been written and the way that the courts have interpreted the law, uh, it is typically slanted towards finding a public employee yeah. uh, employer relationship versus an independent contractor relationship. Uh, Director Taylor? So um, even with all the, I mean, one of the things that I don't want to do is to spend too much time on the contract because the fact is, is whoever comes to us is going to have their own idea about what kind of contract they want to have. And it could be totally different than what we're looking at right now. Uh, I'm incredibly skeptical that we're going to find anybody that we can all agree is somebody we can enter into a contract with. However, I think it would be an educational process. I think we'd learn a lot about what's going on out there we go ahead and move forward with um, recommendation B, knowing that our attorney has essentially said, <coughs> this person's going to probably be an employee. And so as we go forward, we're probably going to have to take that into consideration. But I don't want to have a huge, spend hours and hours and hours talking about whether they're an employee or a contractor before we even see who's out there, because I, I'm incredibly skeptical that we're going to get somebody that we all like. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Director Freeman? So <clears throat> the, um, the RFP that we would be doing now um, is heavily written towards making it over and over again about an the, independent the, contract. contract. Yeah, that's right. right. And, and another aspect that I'll bring up is that um, it, it sounded like a, a big distinction is this that if we bring on a single person, that the single person is, gets heavily slanted towards employee, but if we bring on a firm, that sort of changes. And, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, part of the reason why there is because when you bring on a firm, well, they can just keep swapping out the people. Um, like we aren't even necessarily directing Trindle to be sitting there, we're directing, uh, um, yeah, That's so true. the, um, or at least you do, do research and things like that, like they, they subcontract to the people. And so um, the RFP that we currently have um, to some extent might be slanted towards trying to bring on, or and, and actually I might be wrong about this yeah. part, but it might be slanted towards bringing on a person. Um, and whereas agree. if we were to, for example, just mm -hmm. make some minor edits to it, we might we might make it seem more like we're trying to ask for a small company, which yeah. could be a very small company. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will also say that typically when you want to hire an employee, you don't put out an RFP, you put out a job description and you open the position up. So I think that there are there are the two separate things and if if now that we know that we're gonna want to move towards having this person be considered an employee, um, it might be wise to reconsider. Um, and I mean I think we I, we're still in a really good position in terms of I think we've really done a lot of the legwork of what we want to see um, prioritized by the general manager, and it's really good that we did have this discussion. Um, I would say um, if there's action to be taken, I mean, I think that if if there is no way that this person we've designated as an independent contractor, then we're gonna have to find out what it is that we, as the district, are going to need to provide to the employee to be in legal compliance, whether that's workers' compensation or any, any of those things, I'm not quite sure. So. Okay, so I'll move to send it back to formation committee for further review. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, moved by Thurlow, seconded by Brent. Um, so that's to send. And I think we've got. A, this. I think the formation committee has enough feedback here to have direction about where it's going to go.
And just to be consistent with how we've been doing it, can we make it uh, refer this item back? Sure. Friendly. I suppose to send. <laughs> to be consistent. <laughs> Director Freeman. Um, and uh, not saying this needs to be part of motion or anything, but just um, as referring back to, I don't think it's necessarily clear that the person has to be an employee, only that we, if we want to try to get an independent contractor, that we would want to try to get a firm. So I think that we should continue to look into and information committee can decide what we should be doing with relation to. Yeah, in relation, I, I was sitting here thinking, I thought that the staff person for LAFCO is a company. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, that's right. So, and, and on the question of that, and this is another question for you, Mr. Trindle, um, so the, if, we are, if we move towards trying to get firms to serve as, um, as, as a general manager, um, what, is, what do those firms typically look like? Are they, um, are, are they companies? Are they nonprofits? How do they function? Typically, they're, they're, they're corporate entities. Yeah. And they employ people who have experience in the, in the field. Uh, there are a number of uh, special districts that I'm aware of that employ uh, uh, Compass Communications is the name of the, the uh, K-A-M-P-A, -A, Compa uh, Communications, I believe is the name of the firm for consulting services. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have a person who's designated That's to right. serve primarily in that role, but that person can be swapped out. But they're, they're, they're typically for-profit companies. Um, Something that may be uh, an issue for the formation committee is to you know refer it to me, to my firm, and we can put together a couple of different options uh, that the legal side of it on the front end yeah. come up with a couple of different solutions, potential solutions, and then the formation committee can discuss on which way it wants to go to leave it open for a potential corporate consulting type of an agreement or if it is going to be an independent contractor, how might you best structure that to resist a challenge, or whether it's an employment agreement and how can we best uh, represent the legal requirements in light of where the district is financially. All of that can be vetted you know, through my firm and provided to the formation committee uh, upon instruction. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Director for all. You know, m my only concern with that is that, is that we're gonna invest a, a lot of time and there is no money to fund this, I can tell you there is no money to mm -hmm. fund this, and no firm is going to come in here and do it for free with all the exposure that they would have. Unless it's a one person firm that was set up to do this kind of work, and, and I'm not sure if referring it to your office will locate that one person firm that's willing to do this for little or no money. But you you tell me. Because I doubt that Campa is going to come in and do it for $2,000 yeah. a year. Yeah, there's no way. Uh, stranger things have happened. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball. Okay. Uh, but I can tell you that one of the benefits of a, of a firm uh, like mine is that we have a, a very uh, you know strong network of people that we know, on, both on the legal side, on the administrative side, and uh, it, that's something that we could investigate to see if there are firms who might be interested. Uh, perhaps there are nonprofits uh, that might be able to provide the service. There are a lot of different ways to come at this issue that's sensitive to where the district is financially. Um, there may be other folks out there you know, who want to provide the service uh, on a, a low rate or a pro bono basis at, at this point and be open to renegotiation in, in the future. Know, and that's something that we can investigate as part of that process. But I think your comment's well taken of how much time do you want to spend on the contract when you don't even know what kind of, where the fish are, if they're even going to be biting. That's right, yeah. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, yes, so that was moved by Brant, seconded by Hedges, correct? Is moved by George, George. seconded oh, yeah. by me. Oh, you got it, okay. And that's to refer this item back to the formation committee for further review. Yeah. I think it's understood that we'll be in conversation. With yes. You. Okay. Um, any public comment? Seeing none, any more board comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> any abstentions? So ordered. 5 0. Motion passes. Um,
And is there anything else to consider in this uh, in this uh, agenda item? Nothing else. Okay. So uh, now moving on to item 4.6, uh, district accounting and um, the handling of district funds. Consider recommendations from the formation committee regarding accounting entries. Consider and provide direction regarding banking procedures, and with that include making deposits and withdrawals, and consider and provide direction for the disbursement of withdrawn funds. That should be, it says withdrawal funds, but withdrawn funds. Um, do you want to either Director Thurlow or Director Brandt? Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll just first state what the recommendation is from the committee, which is to direct the board president to interface with the county treasury and make deposits to the district account as necessary and to assign a director to prepare and initiate accounting accounting entries for deposits, payments, budget transactions, etc., and authorize the president to approve these transactions. So um, I'll start with the second one because we've previously spoken, I think, at the board level, and both we've spoken about this formation committee as well, is that typically you have two people who are, are uh, reviewing uh, the transactions when it comes to these entries. Um, and so, um, in the first case, while we're asking the board president to do the interfacing with making deposits and things like that, in the other case, it would be uh, another director who would be doing the accounting. So when this came to the board last time, we had it set up as the creation of, of officer positions, and then we decided that that wasn't the direction that we wanted to go, that that would be unnecessary, and um, also there was concern about having um, directors serving in multiple officer positions. Um, and we realized that wasn't even really our intent with wanting to accomplish these tasks in the first place. So I think that what these recommendations are really intended to be are some uh, some stopgap measures be put in place so that we can get money in the bank um, because right now we don't have any procedures for um, how we're going to uh, do these things. Um, and so uh, with that, um, yeah, I mean, I can take questions as well. So are you? Well, I'll um, say as, as far as the first recommendation uh, to direct the board president to interface with uh, the treasury and make deposits to the district account as necessary. That's something, um, barring legal issue, I'm uh, happy to do um, and, and comfortable doing. Um, in the absence of a general manager, uh, is that something that's legally okay for a you, member of the board? You're going to have to. It's the, it's the only option you have yeah. at this point, so yes. Thank you. We didn't have you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to mix the finances and the lawyers together. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, and as far as um, the second part, assigning a director to prepare and initiate accounting entries. Um, now, what's um, kind of the separation between interfacing with the, the county treasury and the second part. Is it that the second part is strictly through the auditor controller's office? Because I see like deposits um, and that's obviously something mentioned in the first part. Yeah, that's a, yeah, so well, I think, and I, I wish Bob was here to talk a little bit more about this because I'm going to say what my understanding is, is that usually the accounting side is kept separate at least to an extent from the actual, like the making of the deposits and um, my understanding is that the accounting is internal, but it gets shared with, um, I believe it's the auditor controller's office. And so, um, I, I, can you, what, what exactly is your question in this one? Oh, just what's the, I guess, the, the separation there? Well, the separation is that my understanding is typically um, you have two people who are doing the accounting so that there's uh, oversight. And so there are two different roles in this second recommendation as opposed to the one in the first. And that's why it's uh, delineated. Right, right. Okay. Um, any other board questions? None. Um, I'll, move, I'll move approval of item 4.6. <coughs> okay. So, uh, motion to move approval of item 4.6. To, to essentially direct the board president uh, under A and also under B, assign a director to prepare. And again, my understanding of that was 
we need to have somebody set up the various line items that our budget's going to have. And well, I think that actually is something that's a, a little bit separate, but okay. those interact with the budget eventually. Well, we, and we can talk about that in a later item. Okay. So, but right now we want to assign a director to do this, right? Like right. we want to. That's do, correct. Okay. Maybe if you would amend the motion to direct the board president to assign a director. Sure. Friendly. Amendment. Well, could we just put the director in the in the motion? Sure. Would yeah. Okay? Sure. I mean, I'm thinking right now just for um, the purpose of expedience and um, getting things done. I think Director Geis is the best person for it, being that he's the former auditor controller. I know that um, his desire is to um, have someone else on the board do it, if I'm understanding correctly, so that um, someone else can gain experience, which I so appreciate, and I think that could be a great option for down the road, but in this uh, startup point, I think it's important that we just uh, get right to work. Mm -hmm. okay. What well, um, if I can clarify, I think what he wanted was to be able to, quote unquote, train someone and it sounds like right. you are that someone in this case so got it well within uh, what we're assigned to do if that's possible I look forward to it um, but so could we um, maybe have the motion to read in full um, that short sentence in A and then um, assign director guys etc friendly Okay. Actually, I don't even remember if I seconded, but I think you I did. Did. You did. So then just to um, clarify with that uh, amendment, um, it's to approve recommendations found in item 4.6A to direct the board president to interface with the county treasury and make deposits to the district account as necessary, and B, assign Director Geis to prepare and initiate accounting entries. Um, deposits, payments, budget transactions, etc., and authorize the president to approve these transactions. Um, it, that's uh, friendly with maker, etc. Mm -hmm. All good. Um, any public comment? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. Trindle, any? No, you're good. Cool, thank you. Um, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So order, motion passes 5-0, um, two directors absent. All right, um, so 4.7 I put on here um, to debrief from the Public Safety Town Hall, and I'll get to you in one second. Well, I, I, was, I wanted to make, make a modification to the agenda if possible. Modification Can I finish what I was saying? Oh, maybe you were another yeah. close um, What I was saying is that we uh, push this back and consider the first two first um, and perhaps table it when we get there um, because I was thinking many members of the public would come up to come out to follow up on it um, and uh, I'm not seeing that yet so we're going to move over to item four Wait, point put you back to the first two what item 4.7 we are going to consider last on this agenda uh, okay yeah is there wait I am still not understanding the reason just because because there's two um, two things that I see as more important to these that's proceedings yeah, that sure. are going to take a higher level of concentration in this late hour. Cool. Um, so that's why we're moving to 4.8. Fiscal year 2017 okay. 18 budget process and procedures. Uh, discuss ideas, options, and procedures for creating and adopting a budget for fiscal year 2017 18. Now, in watching uh, the proceedings of the Formation Committee, I know that this is something that's been at least somewhat discussed. Um, I put this on this agenda. Um, based on the current work of the University Negotiations Ad Hoc Committee in uh, speaking with um, the university about funding services. I anticipate we're going to need to provide a budget. Um, and then also just knowing that we're getting near the start of the fiscal year for most special districts. Last week I attended the IVRPE's uh, Finance Committee meeting on the budget. I thought it's appropriate that we um, consider how we are going to handle this um, because I assume we're going to uh, want to have a budget starting July 1st for fiscal year 1718. Um, and I think what we need to consider here, um, less the content but more just who's going to be responsible for that. Uh, do we want to create a um, specific ad hoc committee to work only on creating this um, budget to be presented to um, the Board of Directors for approval. I think that could be something that's good. Um, I think it's related to the Formation Committee's function, but they are um, doing a lot right now 
and um, I think creating an ad hoc committee could um, move with more expedience to only look at um, this specific task at hand. Director Brown? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you that I think there's a need for an ad hoc committee and expedience. And one of the other things to keep in mind is that with this budget, because we have, I don't believe, had any transactions at all at this time, um, this budget is going to be fairly simple. A lot of it is going to be making sure that it's formatted correctly and that we're following all the procedures that we need to in terms of adopting it. Um, and also um, thinking about in the future um, the process by which we want to um, be able to adopt the budget <coughs> for when we have more things, but also the process for budget <coughs> revisions because that's where the bulk of this is going to happen, um, I think, is, 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 is adopting uh, revisions to the budget. Um, so um, I agree that an ad hoc committee would be more advantageous, especially since this is a really short-term sort of thing that needs to be accomplished by uh, the end of the month. Right. And now my thought is not that the ad hoc committee will um, be responsible for coming up for a process of revisions. I think that will be really important, but perhaps that should be something of uh, the formation committee or the policy committee, um, or just the board. I don't think it will be too uh, burdensome for us to hear it here. It would probably be yeah. a simple procedure. But since it's an ad hoc committee, I want it to just be narrowly focused on creating recommendations for a budget for fiscal year 17-18. Okay. And I think right now the budget should not include services, at least this budget here, but, um, and the reason being uh, at this time we haven't reached an agreement with the university yet because it's just being initiated. But I do think that what it should include is um, pledged income right now um, and anticipated administrative expenses um, and we'll come up with a good procedure at the board level for r revising that budget um, but I think that's really what we need to focus on in um, in this initial in this initial budget uh, director Freeman do you happen to know what our legal obligations are with relation to having a budget and whether that satisfies it I realize you might not, by the way, know the answer to any question off the top of your head that I might be throwing at you today, considering you that. <laughs> Generally speaking, yes. The particulars, though, whatever it is that the ad hoc committee determines that it wants to have, can be pushed through uh, me and my firm, and we'll make sure that it satisfies all the legal requirements off at, at, the, at the outset. But generally speaking, yes, you want to set forth what your expenditures are going to be, what your, your income is or is anticipated to be, it's a lot of formatting to make sure that you have all the different categories that are set out. Uh, most of them is gonna, are going to be blank or zero until they're populated with dollars. But we are obligated by law to act by the 30th of June. Yeah, you need to, you need to put together a budget. I, I mean, part of my specific question though is is, is it sufficient? To, like to, um, Ethan mentioned, um, just listing off the amount of money we're expecting to receive, and then not like just z having zeros for the amount of money that we're spending, and then change that later. That's efficient. Well, it, the, the, the budget will be set, and if the amount that comes into the budget are the different funding categories, for example, if you have a general fund, and right now your general fund is zero. So if, if in the future that you have that money come in, the structure of the budget doesn't change in the sense of spending categories, revenue categories, et cetera. How that money is spent later on are actions that the board can take or uh, staff can take at the administrative level and authorize, et cetera. So the budget is what it is. And if something happens you know, up and down, that's on the accounting you know, side of it, uh, not on the, the budget creation and adoption uh, standpoint. Does that make sense? So the structure of the budget still has to have all the different things we might want to, services and everything on it, for example, has to be in the? Right, so whatever, okay. I, I'll, I'll look at what the requirements are for uh, you know, given the powers that you have activated, I'll see what the categories are. I'll work with the ad hoc committee members to make sure that all the categories are there, provide examples, see if there's a specific format that needs to be followed, which there will be, uh, and then that will be the budget that's adopted. That's, it's, a, it's a plan. It's a plan for what the district anticipates it's going to have uh, and what it anticipates it's going to spend on, and that will the reality will be whatever it is the reality is from time to time. And then when you go through the audit process, it'll be audited to make sure that money coming in and going out, you know, if it deviated from the budget, there was a reason why. 
and then it's all backed up. Awesome, thank you. Um, any other? Just, just a question. So, so a lot of that really is just setting a placeholder that will be populated later. Correct. Rather than, you know, it's you know we're not. There's no, there, there are very few policy decisions that you can make at this point mm -hmm. involving funding because you don't have any funding. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that it's really just setting out what the structure is going to be, uh, you know, like setting up a budget for you know a house, mm -hmm. your, your personal, your your household. Mm -hmm. uh, if one of the members of the household ends up getting a job that, or a raise that mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily anticipated in the budget, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have a category it. for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Gotcha. And I will also just say, though, for those who aren't that familiar with the, how the budget process works with some other local governments, so for example, the way the county does it, does it when they need to do a budget revision is they have an item that goes on consent agenda that states what the budget revision is, and then they have it, the, obviously all the supporting documents to, to do so. So it's, a, it's a something that's fairly routine. Mm -hmm. And then one more thing. Um, I know from, uh, from my experience at Isla Vista Recreation and Park District, um, certain money that's coming in from external um, organizations and agencies, um, such as grant funding for particular programs, um, isn't always reflected in the general fund. And sometimes there's alternative funds for that. Mm -hmm. So like, whereas mm -hmm. we're considering the, um, the $200,000, for example, pledged from the university, um, there's a good chance that um, should that show up in a, bu a budget of ours, it won't be in the general fund, but rather that's a right. specific fund um, related mm -hmm. to that contribution mm -hmm. or service. Um, so that's kind of my, my idea right now with um, why, or at least what I said at the beginning, that um, we probably won't be setting prices for specific services at this point. Mm -hmm. But I really think it is. Yeah, a just, to, just to reiterate, a, a huge chunk of that 200000 May never flow through the budget. That's right. And so mm -hmm. I think we got to be careful. It'll flow through the budget. It won't flow through our accounts. Right. I don't even know that it'll flow through your budget because it's not. It it will not show up as. So let's just take a, the easy example, which is the interns. You're not going to budget money for the interns because the money's never going to come in and it's never going to go out. So. Well, what we're talking about right now is that there are some occasions where the money isn't flowing through quote unquote our accounts but it is still reflected in the budget. Well, I don't know how you do that. No, I wasn't speaking to that. For I, I thought we've talked about this. For IVRPD, it was still going into the accounts of the park district, um, even though it was coming from somewhere else. But great example with interns. Um, we, uh, well, I thought, I th that's uh, not correct me if I'm wrong, I thought we, were talk we talked at one point about whether, like the question of whether or not we needed to budget them, and we might have had to. Of course, these are all things the ad hoc committee can figure out, but okay. Yeah, but I, I don't. Really I, I just don't understand how you would budget them if the mo you never realize. I mean, from an accounting point of view, again, not licensed in California, but how do you recognize income that you never have, right. and how do you recognize a liability that you never have? You can't. You can't do that. Yeah, I think where our budgeting but for anyway. for programs like the internship program comes in is in program design but not right. in, like, right. it's, right. I think we'll absolutely d have discussions about how much something will cost, but that'll be more in the program design than our books. <laughs> Director Freeman. Yeah, I, I've asked in the past for a, a, a budget for that money so that we can have an understanding of how we would plan it or how much we would ask for administrative versus services or, like, what the, how the negotiations would work, but they are, that's not the same thing as, like, this budget, like that, like that was that was just something that I was like thinking that we would have as okay. far as like our internal usage of understanding how much money we were going to be allocating, hopefully with the university, to different things. But it wouldn't actually; it's not our, our formal budget because they really are they're just going to spend the money. And okay. We're going to. I had a misunderstanding then. I thought we talked about this specifically okay. at the board level, but I guess I I was misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. um, so you need a motion to um, direct. Yeah. Is president of the board. Well, first create a committee. Okay. So, so I'll make, well, is that within this? I don't want to, I mean, I already got in trouble no. for creating I, I can make it. I've got something typed up if you want uh, the first one. Mr. Trindle, can we create an ad hoc committee from, to, to address 
this. Um, based on this. Based on based on the language of this agenda item. It says discuss ideas, options, and procedures for creating and adopting a budget for fiscal year 2017. Yeah, you can okay. create an ad hoc committee. Oh, so, okay, so I'll move to create an ad hoc committee for the budget process, and that the. I don't think we need it in two motions, do we? And that the president will appoint the members of that committee. And you need to s define what the scope of the ad hoc committee is. Yeah, so That's first right. let's That's see right. what um, Will has from that. I just have a motion to create an ad hoc committee for the budget process. Okay, so within that we want to have... to cr Well, okay, so to create a budget process and to formulate a preliminary budget for fiscal year. For fiscal year 17, 18. And do we have to have any timing on that? Or should that terms be? In terms of? Uh, how long the committee will last, or based on Well, the it, scope? I think that you have to have it adopted by the end of the month in right. order to hit the fiscal can, year. Can yeah. so I, think you're with I think that's probably uh, uh, apparent, but. Yeah. Cool. It, oh, well, if it's fine, I'm super happy with yeah. it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Can I ask for a second? I second. Okay, made by Thurlow, uh, seconded by Brett. Any public comment? Any more board comment? I just want to uh, mix in that that question was, was understood, that we were asking not about telling the committee that we needed to get it done by a certain time, but, by, but um, essentially what we occasionally get blasted on is um, having a termination time for the committee, like this committee will last no longer than a certain amount of time. And, and, and a hoc committee, the, the issue is whether it meets regularly and is there some type of a time horizon set on it. That's, that's ad hoc by its nature. This, otherwise, it's a standing committee. Yeah, and that's, and that's right. And so you're saying we do not have to specify. Well, I think that the cool. fact that the charge of the committee is to have this completed right. in time for the creation of fiscal year budget, I think that the timing is inherent. Exciting. That's about as ad hoc as you can get. Yes. <laughs> yeah. okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Any more board question? This guy's going to do us wonders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, 5-0. Uh, two directors absent. Um, so now for a second motion, were you proposing? Uh, do I need a second I think you know. I think you made them in the. I, th I thought I put it in that original it's motion. It's yeah, so I have oh, okay. an ad hoc committee for the budget process, formulate. Um, Preliminary budget for fiscal year 2017 18 and direct board president to the ad hoc committee. Okay. And now, Mr. Trindle, in the past, when we've made motions like this um, that have directed me as the board president to make these appointments, um, I've stated my appointments. I want to confirm that that's something that, based on the direction given, I can do. Yeah, you okay. have the power. Okay, because I've, um, I've never have. seen it in the minutes of another special district, so we were kind of operating without that. But it, it, It's I mean, if you want to do it in a different part in the agenda, you certainly can, but you have the authority now. Okay. By the board just gave you the authority to make the appointments. Cool. When and how you do that is up to you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so Why not you could withhold them. Until yeah. So, so, so who's, um, who's interested? Um, I, I'm definitely interested um, just being the board I president. I can. You're, you yeah, can't. I'm willing. You're willing. Um, I'm, wi I'm willing as well. You're willing. Um, I think... Director Geis has to be on this. Um, yeah, yeah. I I think that's that would be wise. Um, but I mean, why don't you ask Director Geis? Well, and also, and so hold off and ask him. Yeah, hold off and ask him. Maybe you, you should hold off also because we're about to go into nine, which talks about the responsibilities and membership of committees. Okay. And so, yeah, I, I think that's actually speak, a, an yeah. excellent. Uh, Excellent point, because uh, some responsibilities may change in this next uh, section. So uh, thank you. We'll now move on to 4.9, roles, responsibilities, and membership of committees. Consider and act to clarify or make changes to the roles, responsibilities, and membership of committees. Um, this is something that Director Thurlow requested. Um, if you want to give any thought. Um. Yes, let's, um, I, I would like to um, 
the reason I agendized it was because I think we need to have a broader discussion about what committees we're going to have and who's on them and what the responsibilities are. But it was also to try and clean up any kind of um, error we might have made in terms of creating the committees and creating their jurisdictions. So um, I don't want to have a broad open discussion right now. I don't think this is the time. The question is, is should we send this item to one of our existing committees and really ha have them come back with a, a more, you know, kind of an update, 90 day update on, okay, so here's the committees we have, here's who, who's on them, and here are their responsibilities. Do we want to make any changes to that? And frankly, well, I probably should have done that in a memo to the board in terms of laying it all out, but I didn't. No so. problem. But I think perhaps what could be a good way to do that is rather than having one committee oversee the process, having each committee come back to us with uh, the role that they were created to do and direction they've received from the board since yeah, amending that's that. That's a good idea. Um, I think that could be the best, and that okay. way we don't have any continuing discussions among committees. Okay. Um, I think that's a good idea. Director Brandt? I think it's also though, at least worth it for us to at least have a quick discussion about some of these roles. Uh, here at the board level now because I know that there's been some confusion in the past about um, particularly what the formations committee's juris jurisdiction is and one of the ways that manifested itself is, is within this question about um, if the formation committee uh, has been delegated uh, what it has what it has been delegated since it was an initially uh, chartered with the purpose of, um, I'm trying to remember the exact language, I'm not going to remember it, but um, to uh, perform some of these or um, establish procedures for them, these startup uh, fun functions such as financial structure. Uh, and since one of the things that's been delegated is fundraising, and I believe we've delegated um, something else as well, intern, in the internship program as well. And to clarify, not for the committee to fundraise, but to develop. For the, to, to develop a, a strategic plan, a fundraising strategic plan, not to do the fundraising ourselves, mm -hmm. because it is an advisory committee to the board, not right. a... I think that's what the lawyer's going to do. Hmm. What do you mean? Aren't you going to do fundraising? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to come watch cars. <laughs> 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 or stand in the dunk tank. That might be yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's one thing I want to do. No dunk tank. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, and actually, here's a question that I had um, that this just kind of spurred. If a um, committee of the board has a discussion at their meeting about something that was not designated by the board, what's the, is that against the law? If it's properly noticed um, on their agenda, but, but not directly designated from the board. Well, the, the issue is what was delegated to the committee in the first place. If the board delegated authority to act in a certain way, then the, that committee has to act in accordance with the delegation of power that was given to it. If the committee was formed for the purposes of uh, covering a certain issue or set of issues, then the, the question is, is, did the committee act in a way consistent with the reason why it was created? So for example, if you have a committee charged with developing fundraising, uh, and that committee then goes off and starts looking at uh, developing an RFP for legal services, arguably it's not acting consistent with the reason of its creation. But it hasn't done anything improper because it hasn't done anything outside of its purview in terms of uh, power delegated to it or authority delegated to it. If the committee then let the RFP or issue the RFP without the authority to do so, then yes, there would be legal ramifications for that. But you know, discussing something outside of its you know, jurisdiction, you know, arguably if it's a public, if it's a Brown Act body, and it followed the Brown Act in terms of creating an agenda for that meeting, and it followed that meeting, you know, the question would be what was the harm that was committed? You know, right. is it you follow the law and noticing it and conducting the it, uh, recording it and approval of the minutes, etc., then 
arguably there's no harm that has been that's been done. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, ultimately, it depends on the you know the, on the facts surrounding the reason why the committee was created, whether any authority was delegated to it by the board as a whole, and then what actions were taken subsequent to the creation and or the authority that was delegated. And one thing I'll just clarify, as far as authority that's been delegated to any committee, it's um, always been to recommend back to our board. So. In the, in the, in yeah. With that, since there's been no delegation of power, then it, I think it's, it's a dubious argument that uh, you know, you've acted outside of the jurisdiction if a committee you know, strays a little bit from, it, from its course. But what I can do is I can look at when a committee was created, what the authorizing language was, and then you know what the allegedly offending item or discussion was, and then provide a you know, guidance based on that. Thank you. So based on your suggestion, um, uh, let how about if we ask, if we if I make a motion that asks each of the board committee chairs to uh, draft a memo, memo back to the board, which essentially um, uh, defines their um, jurisdiction or their uh, founding authority <coughs> or whatever word we want to use for it. Um, How about just role and responsibility? Their role and responsibility, perfect. Um, and then also indicates, based on their 90 days, how they think the board might want to either expand that responsibility or, in fact, limit it. Okay, and um, we'll change um, role and responsibility to roles and responsibilities. Sure. Just be, I guess, reflective sure. of the situation right now. Uh, and we'll, as soon as you have it, just uh, read it back. All right, so I have a motion to ask each board committee chair to draft a memo which defines their role and responsibilities and indicate how they might want to expand or limit them. Cool, and we'll just change it to their committee's role and responsibility, not to be right. um, confused for uh, the chair's responsibilities. And um, we should strike board, right? So it's because saying board committee, that yeah, doesn't really sure. make sense. Cool. Who seconded that? Did I second it? There yeah. was no second. Oh, I'll second. Um, Thank you. And that's friendly. Cool. So to ask each committee chair to draft a memo which defines the committee's roles and responsibilities and indicates how the board might want to expand or limit them. That's the, the motion we have. Um, and uh, any more, any public comment? Any more board discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. All right. Um, and is there anything else that you all want to discuss within that item? Nothing more. Um, okay. So uh, we'll now, uh, sorry, I'm just pulling back up my agenda. Uh, so now all that we have left um, within Section 4 is 4.7, Public Safety and Contracting for Additional Police Protection Services. Um, is this something that we'd like to table to a, a future meeting, or is this something that we'd like to discuss right now? Because I, I see um, no action coming. I'd like, to ta I'd like to table it yeah. with, the, with the caveat that um, we need to have, a, we need to engage the county on what's going on with its law enforcement budget vis-a-vis -vis yeah. Final Vista. Yeah. And this idea that, that uh, we're gonna we're gonna be down to three deputies in the foot patrol. Well, we're, we're now at six. It's so only two being two six and a half or three. Feet. Take your pick. Yeah. Both unacceptable. Six six and a half. Yeah. And we don't uh, know whether this yeah. is there. Yeah. There's a lot that uh, I, I get. Your point yeah. is received. We need to know okay. more. Okay. So I don't know how to proceed with that. 
I mean, somebody just told me today that two of the deputies of the six have been out on disability for a significant amount of time. And so the foot patrol is not staffed at that level right now. That is substantially correct. So I just, I'm not sure how we inject ourselves into this discussion with the Board of Supervisors and the politics involved and the fact that, the, that there's negotiations going on now between the county and the university over policing in Isla Vista. I, I think we need to be at the table, right, Darcel? Yeah, I mean, so the budgets come, the CSD has taken a position. Yes, <laughs> and, um, and with that, we uh, had, our position was a full restoration of funds, mm -hmm. um, and with that, the board directed me to, uh, to express our support, and with that, um, I sent a letter to uh, the Board of Supervisors, um, and I intend on speaking at the board yeah, so it's Curious. June 12th, okay. and the public safety section will be coming up at 10.30. Okay. So based on that, I don't think we need to take any more directional action. However, um, it's definitely something that we can discuss okay. more. But well, we have already voted to s support a full restoration of funding. So are you going to appear at the 6.12 meeting? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, I, uh, you know, and I think as we put it on our next agenda. Okay. Cool. Right. So we'll bring that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and with with this us discussing it, it's right now as a as an issue of public safety. And right. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Other than that, is there anything that we want to bring up now? Um, and I also know that this is something for my colleagues on the university negotiations ad hoc committee. This is a service that we'll be discussing. Um, Director Freeman. Um, for anyone <coughs> who did not know, including potentially balancing on the board. Um, I finished editing and uploaded and got the video of that um, on Friday or Saturday and I carefully framed out people as they were talking and so anyone who missed the meeting can watch it. Thank you. Yeah, Would there be any just, objection to my uh, being there the 12th um, as a voice on that one? No, not at all. I plan, uh, I plan to be there too. Yeah, yeah. That uh, it obviously is something very important to me having been the chaplain to the uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Foot Patrol for better than two decades yeah we can't have more than three so if this is our group this is our yeah, group. yeah just I think uh, well that. actually so maybe we should ask yeah. I don't know yeah. Yeah. we should we should ask Ross about that because okay so it's my understanding that if a quorum of our board um, attends a public hearing of another legislative body that we can and outside of the fact that this isn't even something that's within our jurisdiction this is taking a position on something um, that we can all appear and speak publicly about. Are you appearing on behalf of the district, or are you appearing on behalf of yourself as a resident? Myself. I, I am as based on uh, the direction I've been given. But but I would be here uh, appearing on behalf of myself. I'll just make that clear when you're when you're giving your statement. Make okay. that distinction. Yeah. Yeah. You're appearing on behalf. I, I know how to do that. I've yeah. done that. Okay. That's right. It is a matter of policy that we okay. recommend. Generally speaking, you don't want to have a majority attending the same function and sitting at the same table. So don't all sit in the same row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it okay if I sit with the cops? Yes. <laughs> For example, they've taken a position on it at a public meeting of their body. Mm -hmm. So does that change things? Well, we'll that's there. In ter well, it depends on what the, po the the position of the board president acting on behalf of the district. I mean, obviously his statements are going to be consistent with whatever the policy position they've taken before, uh, and when. The other members of the board are making their statements. They'll make clear that they're appearing as county residents mm -hmm. uh, and not as members of, of the board of directors, and that mm -hmm. segregates it out. Mm -hmm. But even outside of that, sorry to interrupt, but arguably our position is moot now that we went through the funding restoration process and the CEO's budget is released, and uh, and the nine deputies are not all included. So, yeah, you, I mean, you're but that's still what we're advocating for. You're still asking for In the final budget. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, Director Freeman. I mean, it's an open and public document, uh, and, and I mean, it has this similar thing in the law, but it's just easier for me to find it. The open and public five guide um, has the ex fourth exemption allows majority of the legislative body to attend an open and publicized meeting of another body at the local agency or a legislative body of another local agency. 
and specifically has in the Q&A, the entire legislative body intends to testify against a bill before the Senate Local Government Committee in Sacramento. Must this activity be noticed as a meeting of the body? No, because the members are attending and participating in an open meeting of another governmental body which the public may attend. So, and I, I was kind of under the impression that this yeah. was just not an issue. But Same thing. We're the yeah. public. Also. It's really easy to just say, I'm not representing the CSU. And then you can say, I yeah. am representing the CSD. Yeah. <laughs> it will be like, cool. mm. okay, awesome. Uh, I think. Uh, but but, it, I, but continue. I, I think it's, we actually are allowed to speak about things that are within our business to be right. but as long as as long as we yeah. are doing it among ourselves. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. So we'll uh, we'll discuss that specific topic at an upcoming meeting. Uh, anything else that we want to discuss on this tonight? Nothing. Okay. Now. Um, I realized that there was one more very quick thing I wanted to bring up in um, 4.9 roles, responsibilities, and membership committees. Um, there's one membership change that I want us to consider, um, and that's based on the fact that the formation committee and policy committee are often considering items that are substantially similar, and to prevent any um, any serial meeting um, from inadvertently occurring, even though I don't think it's happened, I. Uh, think that we should have membership that's exclusive of one another. Um, and right now we do have one common member, uh, Director Brandt, who's done a fantastic job on both committees. Um, but I think uh, going forward we should separate the committees. Um, and do you have any comment on that idea? Yeah, I, 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 th I think that generally to be safe, I think that that is, is something that we should consider. Um, and uh, I agree with you that I think, you know, everything has worked out fine thus far uh, in what we've considered. and. We've been extra careful, I think, uh, on both ends, uh, even of the fact that when Formation Committee made its recommendations uh, about this general manager that we declined to comment on stuff that we thought was in policy's jurisdiction, and then policy went and did something about it, and I didn't even talk about what Formation Committee had done. So we have done a good job of being careful, but I understand that this continues to be uh, something that we uh, feel like we're tiptoeing around. And so uh, I can. Uh, I, I think that it is the. I think it's the right thing to do. And Mr. Trindle, do you kind of see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, absolutely. This? And do you think that that could be a wise, wise way it, to proceed? The the lengths that you can go to 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 give the perception of putting up a firewall and actually abiding by that firewall, it it, it serves the interests of the district. It serves the interests of the residents. Thank you. It's very transparent. That's what you want to strive for. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so my idea is that perhaps we uh, bring Director Jordan onto the policy committee and have Director Brandt remain on the formation committee. Um, and I, um, I mean, I think all of us are qualified to serve on the committees that we do, and I think Director Jordan would do an excellent job on this committee. Um, the reason that I think we should have Director Jordan rather than uh, Director Hedges is because uh, Director Hedges just signed up for another huge project with uh, the university negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, right now, uh, Director Jordan is only on the um, Spring Internship Ad Hoc Committee, which is um, about to be completely done. So I think um, that'll be a good distribution of the work. Um, what are Jay, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts as chairperson of the committee. Um, I know that Natalie had been specifying that she, I, I think it's, I think it is fine, because I think we have hit that deadline, but she was specifying that she is just incapable of taking on more things or tasks or work or anything until such a session date. Yeah. I don't remember if it's quite that, passed yet. That date passed. It was the okay. swearing in of the new, it the was. new okay. guard yeah. in the AS. All right. Yeah. Um, I, uh, is it an issue to change the num the the people who are on a committee that have been working on something, like does that cause a serial meeting -ish sort of issue? It would depend on the issues that were discussed. Generally, I want to say no. Okay. But the, the question will be whether that person who's moving from one committee to another is going to be able to firewall off discussions that they've had previously. Uh, because you all are wearing so many hats, I think everybody's doing everything within their power to make sure they're, they're not crossing the streams, as it were, uh, or observing those firewalls. Um, I would say keep doing that, uh, and that's that's going to 
it's going to have to serve for now until you get you know, some, some staff in to help and you know, delegate it to interns, etc. I was just more verifying that if there's stuff we've been working on in policy committee that um, uh, that Spencer, Ethan, and myself have been involved in, and now we put Natalie on this committee mm -hmm. instead of Spencer, in a way we've had four people who are now working on a thing. It, so it, the the question is, is whether you have had substance of discussion of something that is going to be coming before the board for a final decision. Okay, so we should not make the change. Like, uh, I don't know if it, we have such a thing coming up, but we should, if there is something that we, we were working on at the last meeting of policy committee that we punted to the next meeting of policy committee, yes, then we should wait until after that is done. Finish that business. Slice it cleanly. Yes, that okay. would be my suggestion. And now, as chair of policy committee, you would look at me and ask me, is there such a thing, Jay? Um, <laughs> look at I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just offer my, uh, th there's nothing that our committees are working on that are very, that's very substantive. I would, we're not rezoning, yeah. well, we're not rezoning hotel properties to residential. We're not, there's no, f I mean, the bottom line here is there's no financial considerations involved here. Yeah. And it, transparency is about opening up government so that there, so that the people can see if there's financial stuff going on. And that was the whole founding of the Brown Act, was all about transparency around money and finances. We don't have any money, we don't have any finances, we have, n we have made no decisions that impact anybody's financial standing. And so I would say from the point of view of substantive, sure, come, you know, hiring an attorney is substantive in our minds, but Unless, unless we're paying him like $150,000 a year. But substantive to our operation. Right, but it's not substantive to the public, I don't think. From what, I, from what I've seen in terms of the way that the committees have been formed, it, they've been just discussion bodies. It's to, right, right. It's to take the issues that the board mm -hmm. would handle, break them up into chunks, give those to a committee, have them run down information, and report back. You haven't had any delegate, at least not as far as I've seen, you haven't had delegation of power mm -hmm. for the, you haven't said formation committee, come up with an RFP, let the RFP, handle the RFP, and sign somebody up to do X. Mm -hmm. Since yeah. there's been no delegation of power, I, I, I'd have to agree with Director okay. Thurlow, you probably don't have anything on, on the table, substantively, that you would really need to worry about. Got it. That being said, you know I, I know that one person's definition of substantive can be different than another person's, and, and, and the, the optics are <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. what they will be in any given community. So to be on the safest side possible, keep those firewalls up. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, is it really going to matter from a legal standpoint? Probably not, because there isn't any money involved. You don't have any background deals going on. And yeah. um, now, if we were to say one option that we haven't considered, um, take kind of bifurcate the, um, I was about to say repeal and replace, but the uh, <laughs> removal of one director um, and the uh, appointment of another, um, is would it be possible for us to um, to have Director Brandt commit to only the formation committee and have a vacancy on? the policy committee for a week to let us finish our business and then we appoint another member. Sure. Yeah. And and that would mean that we only have two members of three at a meeting. I'm sure we you can just, you just need to agree. We can <laughs> but I mean we only have three we can agree. Exactly. That, so. that would be okay to have a meeting yeah. with us too though. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. If it's a brown act body, it has to have a quorum. If it's not a brown act body, you can you can have two people. I mean it doesn't really matter. Okay. at that point but uh, and it is a, this it, one is one yeah and from the sounds of it, all of your committees except for the one or the two ad hoc committees right. are all brown act bodies so as long as you've got a quorum and they can make you know a decision on whatever it is that's before them then yeah awesome thank you um so does someone have a motion related to director brant's membership on the policy committee Like verify. I feel like I should we're, we're, we're remove, we're, the, the motion is just to remove yeah. Spencer Brandt from the policy committee. Yeah. Repeal, just for repeal a procedural, the, procedural. the way that we've done a committee appointments, just to be consistent, is we direct the president. Direct the president. Right. To, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. you, you, get, you really do venture into an interesting area where you start to have the board 
yeah. voting people on or off the committee. I was just going to ask that question. I mean, what was the grant of authority? Because if the president has the power to appoint, there's an inherent power to remove. You know, absent, if you want to put it to the board to see if there's an objection, I, I, I think I can say that when we did create them, we did all vote on it, and we can talk about the merits of doing that. But I think we did this at our first meeting. Um, yeah, I'm just pulling up how what we did to create this committee. Do you want the minutes? Yes. Um, Sorry, I didn't bring that up. No, not at all. Good. So, um, there was a motion to appoint Director Branch to the Formation Committee and Policy Committee, moved by Bertrand, seconded by Jordan. Motion carried 6-0-1 by roll call vote. So it was an action of the board. Okay. So, and since then we've done the system which we did earlier uh, to direct the president. But well, but that was for an ad hoc committee and not a standing committee. Right. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move to kick Brant off. And I'll second that. All right, let's uh, clean up the language. <laughs> <laughs> How did we make it sound? Because, like, that's, that's what the GOP said, too, right? When they yeah. <laughs> the motion is to... Kick these um, people off their ...is to <laughs> reduce the membership of the policy committee for the short term to two members, excluding Director Brandt. Well, you should just make the motion to take me off. Because yeah, you don't want to specify that there are two people right. on it now. It's still a three-member committee yeah. with right, one I'll, vacancy. I'll move to take Spencer off of policy. I will still second that. And how about to make it sound a little uh, less weird, um, and for Director Brandt to continue with his other existing committee assignments. <laughs> Let the man walk away with his dignity. Yeah. Nah, he's got plenty of dignity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And let's just see what he's saying. Yeah, we have a second. Okay. Um, and what we have written down is to remove Director Brandt from the policy committee and for Director Brandt to continue with his other existing committee assignments. Um, is that. Uh, Friendly. Friendly. Okay. Uh, any public comment? None. Any more board comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. Okay. One abstention. So ordered. Motion passes 4 0, <coughs> one abstention, two absent. All right. That concludes um, our agenda. Now uh, moving, well, that concludes section four. Now moving into five uh, future meeting dates. Our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday the 20th. Um, does anyone have future agenda items that they'd like to bring up now related to this, uh, this meeting? Because I'm going to mention them in a minute that I think we need to have a special meeting for something. Oh, but, uh, uh -oh. you're probably reading my mind. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, as I'm guessing a few people up here know, there is um, existing litigation against the district, um, and it is something that we need to consider immediately. Um, and now, Mr. Trindle, I, uh, I've, in, in a lot of what I've read about uh, a, a closed session um, meeting of the board or an agenda item that goes to closed session, mm -hmm. um, for litigation, everything I've read has been to confer with legal counsel. Um, and I mean, now we're in a situation where obviously we would want in that closed session to confer with legal counsel. But say if we were to consult with you about a matter um, where you're not physically here, is, is that allowed? Yes, I, I've, I have appeared at closed session items uh, by oh. phone a number of times for clients that are remote or when you have people who are uh, calling in from different locations. But, okay. but. If we have, I think your question was, if we have a closed session, can we have a closed session to discuss litigation without you present? You can, and that has its own statutory protections under the government code that, that apply to, you can't release information from a closed session, there are penalties associated mm -hmm. with it. My recommendation is that you do not. 
because you get the statutory protections, but you also get attorney-client privilege on top of that. Okay. But your recommendation is that we do not what? My recommendation would be, if the question was asked, can you have a closed session regarding existing litigation without legal counsel present? The answer oh. is yes, that you can. My recommendation is that you do not do that because you don't have the protections of the attorney-client privilege uh, that attach in addition to the statutory protections under the government code. Right. And well, what my question is, I'm trying to save you a drive to Santa Barbara. If we were to do it on the phone, yes, would we have as, that privilege? Yes, as long privilege? as there are no members of the public present, yes. then that preserves the integrity of the closed session under the government code and also uh, ensures the protection and the integrity of the attorney-client relationship. I have a question. Do you do teleconference? Yes. Okay. So um, I, I think uh, as board president, I'll work with um, our general counsel to uh, put out and to, to draft that agenda item for a special meeting to happen later in this week. I'll mm -hmm. keep everyone informed. Okay. Um, Can you give us lots please. of notice on that? Because clearly we all want to be there. Oh, absolutely. Okay. As, as soon as we get to it. Um, it's going to be very soon um, because there is timing requirements. Okay. So, so since we're talking to the, to the attorney, and you can tell me if this is not agendized, um, at some point we're going to have to deal with the gnarly issue, which is uh, I have legal counsel via my position as a paid employee of the university, mm -hmm. and sitting here as a paid employee of the university, <coughs> they <coughs> represent me and would want to represent me first and foremost if whatever I'm doing is within the course of my employment. Mm -hmm. The same really goes for Bob, guys, which is he, while well, he's not a paid employee, he's a representative of the county, and clearly I would think the county would want to represent him should there be litigation involving him. So at some point we need to deal with an early issue of we have multiple attorneys involved here. And how do we do that in a way that's um, positive and my suggestion not, would be not complicated. Sure. My given that we're under number five future meetings, uh, future agenda items, uh, what you can do is direct staff, i.e. me, and my office to prepare a, a memorandum uh, that covers and addresses those questions. So okay. we can deliver that to the board. Okay. That's good. That'd be good. good. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, so, other, yeah. so other agenda items, so we talked a little bit about um, these cuts that might be happening at the county level. Um, is, I, is there a necessity to, to take further action regarding that or have we come to the position that um, we are going to continue to be at and do we not feel that there is need for further action well we'll I still have a discussion right yeah i think yeah. we should put it on the agenda yeah i have that mm -hmm. down as well but i mean be given the timely nature of this i, I think this discussion is going to go on for a while mm -hmm. i i think that the budget approval of the budget will not end the discussion of public safety right. yeah we no. I, I have it down as an item i'm we putting it on the agenda happen. oh no okay uh, I, yeah okay uh anything else um, as always, you can still submit agenda items to the secretary. Well, I think you should give us a report on your negotiations with the university. The Our committee will. Yes, yeah. and um, and that there may be actions to be taken after that. So I think you want to agendize that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So update from university negotiations ad hoc committee. And then also I'll have something on there for uh, the <coughs> summer internship program. Give yeah. a status update yeah. on that. All right. Anything else? Every, has everybody done all of their required uh, AB 1234 and 1825 trainings? We haven't done 1825. All, everyone has their 1234 training stuff? Yes. Yeah. Not everybody, but I wait, actually... Wait. Everyone has no, them completed, 1234 right? is a sexual harassment, right? No. Sexual yeah. harassment avoidance. Right. Oh, oh, that's 1234? Um, I'm sorry, I was I'm thinking I'm that's... 1825 is the ethics one. Oh, we yeah. all have we, 1825 we all completed. We do oh, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're waiting for the special districts.
to provide us with the course. I was say is I, I've done those, and if you'd like, I can I can come up for a special session. It's two hours, and I can present that for the court. That would be incredible. That would be awesome. Okay. That would be amazing. Just let me know yeah. when it is that uh, you would like what future agenda. Awesome. Yeah, I know, right? Who is this guy? Like <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not the next one, but maybe, uh, maybe one in, in July. Yeah, yeah. You should be in communication awesome. about what's the best time for yes. that. Yes. Uh, we'll work together to figure out an agreeable date for that. Um, and any uh, anything else? Thanks so much for bringing that up. Um, all right, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any uh, public comment? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's a that's George, a yes vote, George. George? Say aye. Yeah, that was yes. Okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> Just making sure. Cause <laughs> Oppose. Yes, as he's going on. Oppose. Any if we only had three yes votes. Then okay. We so adjourn. ordered. Uh, yeah. Meeting is adjourned at uh, nine thirty-two p.m.